No, I don't. Boobs feel or good. golf for the rest of your life. Gun to your head. Can never touch a boob again or can never golf again. Can I do the other stuff? Can never bo- touch a boob again and can never do golf again. Wait, did you just admit that sex is better? Three, two, one, go. Decide. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I said that. Three, two, one. On today's Part in My Take, we have our good friend Ryan Rossillo, dressed ridiculously. Great time with him. We actually recorded it on his 49th birthday. So it was a great time with him. We have the Mount Rushmore of best feelings. We have six Mount Rushmores left. So it's coming down to it. We're going to talk some preseason. This is like the last week before football really starts. Not a ton going on, but we're going to talk some preseason. We're going to do who's back of the week. We also have to talk about Hank lighting the lighthouse. Ringing the bell. Ringing the bell of the lighthouse. Keeping the lighthouse. Keeping the lighthouse. Uh, Great show. It's all brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. If you've been hungry for some college football, well, we finally get a taste this weekend. Don't miss any of the action. Jump in at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's a small but mighty slate of games for Week 0, including a big matchup in Ireland. It's super easy for first-timers to get started. Try betting on something simple like picking a team to win. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. This is going to be DraftKings' biggest college football season to date. Enjoy the ride. Now all the way through the expanded playoffs. We're so excited. The uh, Florida State-Georgia Tech game is the Ireland game. It's going to be great. What is the line for that? Can someone find that for me? Oh, I got it right here. <clears throat> Florida State's on 11.5 point favorite. Florida State, maybe this is them showing out that they should have been included in last year's playoffs. Got to think that angle. Uh, and for all the newbies getting into college spirit, here's something extra special. New DraftKings customers bet 5 bucks, get 200 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings all college football season long. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code TAKE. That's code TAKE for new customers. Get $200 in bonus bets. When you bet just 5 bucks only on DraftKings, the crown is yours. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by DraftKings. Score big with DraftKings all college football season long. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code TAKE. That's code TAKE for new customers. Get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Today is Monday, August 19th, and this is the first show that we are doing in the midst of royalty. Lighthouse royalty. The keeper of the light. We are with... The keeper of the light slash bell. Henry Lockwood is back in studio. Hank, I don't know. Should we bow to you? What I mean, are you a sir? Are Kirksey. you Yeah. Are you a knight? I'm a what, keeper. You're are a you, keeper. You're, you're officially a keeper. I don't think a knight would light the light, right? No. Well, he didn't. You break the night. Neither did he. That's true. You <laughs> kept the light. So where's yeah. the light? Do you have it right now? Yeah. Is it still on? It is still on. Okay. I think you just keep it inside you. Yeah. You always you have that light, this little light of yours. So you so exp- tell everyone cuz you know we we talked about it briefly when we taped our Mount Rushmore on Wednesday that people were listening to but we didn't get the full recap of you keeping the light slash ringing the bell um and also maybe sprinkling a little Matthew Judon. Yeah, Matthew Judon uh <laughs> that happened the day after we recorded he did get traded. I mean he he's a little bit older. He wasn't probably going to resign. Oh, this is good. Sp- you got uh, your talking points. Yeah, it's good if the if the Patriots you know have a top five pick. God knows how that would happen. Uh, then they're gonna have what? you know five draft picks in in the top one fifty. I think. Okay. Yeah, but you, I, I thought you said that, and that's how you rebuild. I thought you said ongoing talks were productive and good. I think that, but they realize it's probably best for both parties to yeah. trade them. So yeah. it's good, mm-hmm. you know. Productive. Everybody's happy. Yeah, everyone's yes. super happy. This is actually the best thing that's ever happened. Is the draft cutoff usually one fifty? Is that where we're the top one fifty? I can't that's think like of any, halfway through the fourth round. No good players have ever been picked past one fifty, <laughs> especially not with the Patriots. <laughs> but five and out of one fifty is good. Yeah. Is this this was a talking point? Would did they give you a little sheet being like, here's how we're gonna spin this? No, it was, you know, people were obviously like that was the day of. People were a little bummed out. Uh but no, it was an amazing experience. 
got there early. We got to go on the field pregame, save one warm up. Uh, and then they brought us. I, I you know, how long did it take to go from the field to the lighthouse? You had to go all the way up. Yeah, we went old school stair. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was, <laughs> it was cool. They brought us up the elevator. Uh, it's, it's really tall, so it took a while yeah, to go up the elevator. Work, yeah, but yeah. like when you're, you know, it's kind of like. Oh, it was a really, really, really tall elevator because it's a really, PTSD really tall White House. Well, and they do have a little uh, announcer thing, kind of like a tour guide, like you're in uh, Disney World or you know a theme park or like oh, so uh, it's like a, a virtual a... tour where they say, "Welcome to the largest uh, lighthouse in the continental U.S." Which is a nice touch. Because I, I looked on the website, and it's interesting because they have quotes around the word lighthouse. But that was actually really nice because what he just said right there, it's it's basically Disney World. Yeah. It's like it's like going to Vegas and seeing the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, it's like Space Mountain isn't really a mountain. Yeah, right. But people love Space Mountain. Right. And no, people love Vegas. Listen, we're not we're not saying there's not love. It's just like it, it's more of an attraction than a lighthouse. Yeah, it's a it's a lighthouse simulator. Right. Yeah. So Hank, it's I a got representative. Ask, it's, it's, I, it's a representation of the region. You went on a ride. Region. Yeah. I got to ask you from the top of the lighthouse. You had a pretty good view, and I got to say, um, the the double fist pump that you gave to the crowd was incredible, mm-hmm. and it it seemed like they were eating out of the palm of your. Oh my head. god! The they screams, were. It was, it was like the parade all over again. Were yeah. you thinking at any point uh, encore? Because it felt like the fans wanted an encore of you ringing the bell. We well, can't unring the bell. Once yeah. you ring it once, it's kind of wrong. But it like it if you notice, people weren't leaving. <laughs> yeah, and they were like s- sitting there, like, "Come on, we want more." Well, it was a beautiful moment. You guys, you know, obviously are, are making jokes, but it was we're, we're on the way there. And it was, I said a, it I got basically a hurricane. It's a real sports podcast. It was basically a jokes. hurricane going on uh, in Foxborough before we showed up. We're we're driving in. There's lightning. There's thunder. It's dark. You can barely see on the road. And as we're going up the lighthouse, the sun emerged from the clouds. You know, the sun came out. The the skies got bright. You said that already. Obviously, you know, because of the rain, the fans hadn't got there yet because uh, it was such bad weather. They were probably needing a light to guide them into the stadium. Preseason game. And it yeah. hadn't it hadn't started yet. So yeah, they said you know you're gonna ring the bell three times and turn around and face the crowd. And it was, it was, I started laughing, I think. You couldn't really see my face, but I <laughs> it turned was so around funny. <laughs> and I, I instinctively did this. Yeah. And I heard, Let like, hear it, it was, I heard, I just saw seats and I heard, like, one, you know. <laughs> there was a rogue clapper. The, there the, was a lot of AWLs there, though. The, for the amount of, limited amount of people there, there was, you know, a good amount of AWLs. So thank you for, for, for shouting me out when you were there. The behind the scenes clip you posted on your Instagram was so funny because it was like ringing the bell and then kind of silence. And then someone behind, maybe it was one of your friends, just started clapping. <laughs> and it was kind of like a Jeb Bush, please clap moment, where it's like, we got we to gotta do something here. Everybody wants to know, though, Hank, you get up to the top of the lighthouse, you look at, I'm sure you looked for a federally recognized body of water. Yep. Did you find one? There was trees uh, were in full bloom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think the Neponton River uh, was, it, you could see through it a little bit, but it was pretty blocked by the trees. So you Got couldn't it. see it. Got it. Because I, w- I would imagine that if you had seen the river, you would have taken like nine pictures of the river and been like, look. At it was also river. really still uh, foggy from the well, I think you said the, the sun came out. Yeah, but the, there was still some lingering fog, so you couldn't really see too too far out because of the fog. So, you, but it was so there. you could see the sun though. Yeah, mm-hmm. but not the trees. But like seeing far enough, you know, there's so much fog. That sun's you, really far away. Yeah, did well, any, no, the sun was behind us. But oh. did any boats crash into the stadium while you were up there? Nope, nope. So, I oh, kept, so you I kept, job. I kept it well. I kept it well. Did you did you get the vibe that maybe you're going to be invited back for a regular season game? Yeah, I think that was a good first step. I yeah. think I, I, you know, I talked I know to the Patriots after. It. Yeah, the Patriots were they were amazing. They rolled out the red carpet. Uh, I, you know, thanked them the next day. They said you were a great keeper of the light. Okay. Uh, one of the funnier moments was you know a very official woman came up with a very official like big book. She's like, we need you to sign this. All the keepers of the light sign it, and oh. they went through. There's only been ten, or I think I was the tenth. Oh, I'm like oh. Tom Brady. Tom Brady was the first one. Kenny Chesney, James White. Oh my like god! Like the you know the a team that won the state championship. <laughs> and then Henry Lockwood. And I was just laughing, thinking about like two years from now when yeah. like, there's actually you know a famous person who's not really familiar, obviously, and they're going through that list and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, and they're just gonna like flip through my name, like Henry Lockwood, and then uh, did you write Make a Wish underneath it? No, there actually was another Make a Wish kid. Oh, okay. In one of the in one of the uh, he was one of the ten. 
So you, when you say there was another Make a Wish, you're there was you're a admitting that you were a Make a Wish. It was yeah. I mean, it, listen, it it was a very cool moment. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't. Summer Hank keeps surreal. going. Yeah, it was yeah, surreal. It was, it was awesome. very surreal. I didn't feel like I necessarily deserved it, but it was cool. They announced me. They said, you know, please welcome part of my take, Brady Four. Like that was a very Love cool it. moment. Uh, and yeah, it was it it, it was sick. Like it's the pictures, your world. The pictures will last forever, and I think I did a good job. And you know, oh, you crushed it. As things go along, like they're obviously gonna you know go through the roster of all the famous you know celebrity Patriot fans, but eventually they're gonna have to go back to the well, and they might just look through the book. Yeah, who's yeah. number ten? Yeah, let's bring him back. We know he can do the job. Yeah, it's it's very good, Hank. It's very it's they a, said it's a prestigious honor. I'm looking through the list of people here that have been asked to keep the light, and it's like a general from the army. Dante Scarnecchia was asked to do it. What is Kenny Chesney? What's his connection? Because I feel like Kenny Chesney is just the the guy that they invite whenever they need a celebrity sports fan to show up, regardless of team. He does Country Fest there every year. Like he's a big, uh, and I'm sure he's friends with the crowds, but that's always like a big concert at Gillette. And I think he is a Patriots. They fan. just didn't have. Oh, he might have done it. He might have done it for. I think he did it second. He might have yeah, done it for second. Army Navy for game day. No, he was second. He was the second person oh. up there. So it was Tom. He did it first on the 10th. Then Kenny Chesney did it on the 17th. I feel like Kenny Chesney does three different college game days a year, yeah. too. Did you guys win? We did not win. They also, I will say, oh, no. they said the person up up top, uh, the person who was, you know, stationed up there, they said Kenny Chesney was really nervous, and I was less nervous than him. Wow. Oh, wow. That's you weren't even cool. nervous. And another guy came up and said that was one of the hardest – as I was walking in, uh, one of the ushers was like, <laughs> "Don't ring it too hard," and I was like, "I'm that. That just means I'm going to go even yeah. harder." Yeah. yeah, he was basically daring you. So wait, the Eagles won. Eagles won. Eagles had a comeback victory. And I feel Congrats, like Max. I feel like Patriots fans. Thanks, guys. Um, you're now experiencing phase two of Joe Milton. Yeah, was it phase two? It was a little bit of phase two. Hank doesn't remember. You don't remember? He Were you drunk? Off, no, Hank, he was living Hank. off the the high of the lighthouse. Were you drunk when you rang that bell? Not when I rang the bell. Got it. I did, you know, celebrate with a couple shandies after. Yeah. 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 But yeah, Joe, Joe Milton, unfortunately, uh, I mean, I'm still going to get excited about Joe Milton because he's going to make the good, roster. Yeah. When he's good, yeah, he's more, great. You get more quarterbacks now. Um, okay. So great job, Hank. Yeah. Well, thank you. Preseason marches on. We also had uh, Patrick Mahomes should be in jail for being witchcraft because the back, uh, the behind the back pass that he unveiled. Just not fair. Yeah, I said that it should have been taunting running that play because Patrick Mahomes is now bored of football. He's so good at football right. that he he can't play like a normal quarterback because it's too easy for him. So he just ups the difficulty level. Now he's throwing behind the back passes, and now teams have to game plan for it. You got a game plan for it. He did. He gave a quote after the game was over. He said, "Long story short, sorry, long story short, Travis didn't run the route he was supposed to run, and then it was kind of behind the back pass because I was mad. I was pissed off at Travis." So he ran the the wrong route, and then Mahomes threw it behind the back just to kind of like make it more difficult for him to catch the ball. Yeah, and it ended up being one of the best plays I've ever seen. It was so cool. It was so cool. Um, uh, he said, "Out of spite, I threw a behind the back pass, but now it's going to be a highlight." Yeah, now it's going to be a highlight. Now it's going to be something he'll do during game, and now teams have to plan for it. And yeah, he's he's reached a level of like fuck around with football that is has never been seen before yeah and then the camera pans to carson wentz on the sideline just laughing and smiling he's on the chiefs he's on the chiefs oh Carson's. huey that's a big one there's a good chance that carson wentz win, wins another super bowl this yeah year. also randy gregory not on the bucks and was he ever a buck he was uh todd bull said after they decided that they're going to cut him because he never showed up he said you can't miss what you never had yeah which I, is a great a great way to live life he doesn't know why he never showed up I think he just didn't want to do the conditioning. Maybe. In which case, respect to Randy Gregory. I think that he'll probably just get added to the 49ers like halfway through the season and be like, damn, look at the 49ers again. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, PFTR quarterbacks. Still looking good. Yeah, so we were at a wedding on Saturday night. Our good friend Mark Titus, a good friend of the program, got married. Uh, and PFT was uh, watching the game at the wedding because yeah. it's fucked up that he did that. What kind of an asshole gets married week two of the NFL preseason? <laughs> so At 6 p.m. When, yeah. when he knows that Jaden Daniels is going to be playing. Yeah, and I also got uh, accused of uh, by my wife of peeking over it at the game because I just, like, like like a moth to the flame. He was PFT was sitting next to me and he just had the game up and I would just kept on being like, Oh, football's on. Listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch Jaden. I'm yeah. gonna watch my new quarterback in the preseason. I, I did a bad job watching him. I was gonna watch and then when he was out of the game, put the phone away, whatever happens, whatever. Don't care. He looked good. 
but then there was one point in the second quarter. I had looked away from my phone for a while. I was being social or whatever at a wedding. I looked, Lame. I, yeah, big time man card move on mm -hmm. my part. I look back at the, at the screen and I see the quarterback sprinting downfield, running away from everybody. I'm like, fuck yeah, Jaden is so good. Jaden is so good. And then he gets up and it was Jeff Driscoll. Ah, so I guess we big got but Jeff Driscoll. I guess we got we got like two Jadens now. That's incredible. I feel like Jeff Driscoll is sneaky Jaden. I also saw Jeff Driscoll. I believe already has started his second career. Uh, I don't know why. I think someone showed that they were connected to him on LinkedIn, and he's already like working in the greater Florida area. Uh, yeah, acqu acquisition entrepreneur, NFL athlete, acquisition entrepreneur, SMB owner. Good for him, that. SMB. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just very funny that a guy who's playing in the NFL right now has like a full LinkedIn. Yeah, the start of a new Driscoll year. Yeah. Um. All right, and then uh, my guy Caleb Williams made a throw that made me feel things. Yeah, he's good. We got quarterback. He was. He started the game slow, and uh, the haters started piling on. And I was like, "Listen, it's good that I haven't overreacted to any uh, preseason games or plays or throws." And then he dropped that uh, rollout to Roma Dunze, and uh, I lost my mind and went back to telling the haters to suck my dick from the back. Yeah, he was pretty good. He was, yeah, he was really, really good. I'm just very excited for Week One, and I'm very excited to just get on the roller coaster and just have a fucking great ass time. Yeah, I I am starting to get nervous every time Jaden runs with the ball though because he doesn't slide. Are we and, getting and we saw that at LSU yeah. when he gets hit the, it is funny watching that compilation of Jaden Daniels getting hit and with like the Bugs Bunny music. Yeah, because it does look like Looney Tunes yeah. when he's playing. Um I would I would prefer for him to slide and at one point he didn't slide and then Dan Quinn Dan Quinn's hats have gotten more backwards since he became a head he's coach. He's gone further backwards. They're further backwards. I didn't know that was possible, but he's on the sidelines with his backwards hat like jawing at Jaden after the play. And I'm like I Dan Quinn's right. Listen to Dan Quinn. You're going to get hurt, Jaden. Yeah. So I've, I do have that, like, you know, that history with quarterbacks where you get a really good mobile quarterback that can run. He's electric. And I just hope to God that we've done something different with the field. Cause I don't think the Bears did anything different with their field. I saw. Oh, before, so bad. Before the game, they had the scene. Metallica, yeah. Scenes. Metallica did it. Metallica did it. This is, this is the, this is what, like, every time I had, you know, a step forward in, like, man, Ryan Poles has put us. A great team together. Caleb Williams looks like the real guy, and then you just get brought back to, down to reality, where it's like there's just reports that Ryan Poles is walking the field, looking at pointing out all the seams, being like, "This is not safe to play on," because we're not a real franchise. Yeah, Metallica concert one week before the game. Yeah, that's tough. Yep, and they obviously the Bears don't own Soldier Field, so they they don't get to decide they what can't. goes on there. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I just want the season to start. I. I know that we've talked privately, PFT, that we've probably gotten ahead of ourselves. But it's Hank, okay. Are you getting ahead of yourself with Drake May? No, I'm patient. Okay, because I we got, got I got ahead of myself today. Uh, this is we're just giving fodder to the haters uh, who are just going to clip all of these and put a, a compilation. I was in the car with my kids and I was just thinking, like, what if Caleb Williams is awesome for like the next 15 years and my kids like go to college and Caleb Williams is still. The Bears quarterback. Yeah, it could it could be. Like, what like, if? What if they're like literally starting college and they're like, it's yeah, more just I just I grew up with Caleb Williams. It's more going to be like the you saying that than you saying that like three years ago. What do you mean? What? Like I feel like you said that exact same thing about Justin Fields. Okay, well you know what we were. I'm saying like you're talking about the compilation. You rang a fucking bell, dude. It wasn't even a lighthouse. Also, also Caleb's <laughs> different. I can admit that watching Caleb, but my biggest fear He's different. And I, I've talked to Big Cat about this offline, but we might as well share it online. Yeah. My biggest fear now is that Jaden Daniels is going to be so goddamn good, and that Caleb or Jaden Daniels is going to be awesome. Like I'm talking Joe Burrow. I'm talking Josh Allen. And then Caleb Williams is going to be Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yeah, we've already gotten to that and then, point. And then I'm going to be like this motherfucker, <laughs> and I'm not going to be happy with being so great. So like, it's I've really talked myself into a corner here where like I need Jade, I need Jaden to be great more than anything I've ever needed in my entire life. Yeah, yeah. PFT did say that, and I was just like, well, that's we're really getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we've got Jaden as Josh Allen and and Caleb Williams as Patrick. I'd Rose. say mi minimum, minimum Josh <laughs> Allen. Hank, just g get in with us. Yeah, you guys are in win now mode. We're not. In win. Oh, we're in, we're in load up mode. We're in more load like, up. You know, a top one fifty pick. Let Jacoby play. Whatever happens, happens. He's Drake May is more of like an Aaron Rodgers. Like he's going to be great, ah, but he's got to give him some time. Okay. So one Super Bowl in fifteen years. 
Yeah, a couple MVPs. Okay. Yeah, I mean, oh, you, that's what you care about now. You need him. No, to I'm be saying, great. but like Aaron Rodgers, you, you know, I'll I'll take that as my QB all he day. He won one Super Bowl. Yeah, but you yeah. need him kind to of be a great, bust. Though, you need this financially. I actually don't. Oh, I, I guess I do. Yeah. Yeah, but you you do need it to. Well, you actually don't. That's the, that's the thing is Hank could Hank could miss on the next like four quarterbacks and still be fine. Yeah, which we're we're at a point where it's like this, you know, both what we've been through and also our own age and mortality. Yeah, it's like you gotta you gotta do it soon. Like this is kind of our last <laughs> bite at the apple here. Because who who gives a shit? We could be dead. Who gives a shit if if the Commanders win three Super Bowls in my late fifties, right. early sixties? Like these are my prime years for enjoying that sort of thing. Right. We need it now, right now. I hope. I hope it happens. We're we're basically just two chicks with our biological clocks just fucking screaming at us. Yeah. Like, you won't be able to to enjoy Super Bowls in ten years from now. You'll be menopausal. I'm going through menopause right now. <laughs> yeah. We can't have that. We're gonna gain weight, and the, the shitty thing flashes. is, the Patriots could stink, the Celtics could self destruct, and then obviously the Red Sox would become great again. Hank just doesn't go through drought. Yeah, he's just he's just fine with it. They're always wet. Uh, any any other uh, notes from the booth for preseason week two or three? If you played in the Hall of Fame game, don't care about preseason. Okay, all right. That also That's makes us talk. feel bad. That's <laughs> talk, yeah, Max. I know. I know how much of a loser I am to be this excited about Caleb Williams' rollout pass to Roma Dunze, which was incredible. Uh, but I don't care. I don't care that I know I'm this much. I mean, no, that, that pass was sick. That pass was so that sick. That pass was sick. That pass was so sick. Um, there, There is a debate. We can embrace debate real quick. Are you talking about the test? I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about the Olympics. Oh. In 2028. Oh. Flag football. Okay, wait, before we do that. I wanted to do. I wanted to hear your guys' thoughts on a test that has been brought. Up. This has to do with uh, preseason week three or two. Um, I wanted to know what you guys thought because this was a debate in my world. Um, did you see Simone Biles was at the game? Her husband Jonathan Owens plays on the Bears. I saw she was wearing a Packers. She jacket. was wearing. She was wearing a Jonathan Owens jacket who happened to play for the Packers last year. What color was the jacket? It was actually like black and white. Okay. So Any it logos was on it. There was well, he played for the Packers, so his it was a Jonathan Owens jacket and he happened to play for the Packers. So there's a Jonathan Owens logo on it. I think personally just as JO. This is a test by Simone J-O. Biles. Simone Biles is actually doing a great job. She's seeing, "Hey, you guys got to start thinking about winning. You can't be worried about jackets. I'm going to go out on this field with a jacket and see if you guys can keep your composure." It's all about the name on the back of the jacket, not right. the name on the front of the jacket. She should update her jacket. She probably she has been a little busy. She had a walking boot on. Do you think that um, I should have been upset? Uh, yeah, I think you probably should have. Okay, if it was if it had the Green Bay Packers logo on it. Well, it was the Jonathan Owens it, jacket who happened to play for the Packers, and it had the Green Bay Packers logo on it. It didn't really. It kind of was just the helmets that he wore. It wasn't like a low. It so wasn't it, like a, a Kristen Juszczyk. Jacket. Oh, there was multiple helmets on there. Well, it was just like a collage of let me, him. Let me look this up. It was him. It was a he him. Play, he happened to play for the Packers last year. Again, I think this was a test, and I will not fail this test. Smooth I will not break me. I will not let it jacket. break the Bears fan base. I will not let us have have. We're we're in, we're in, we're about to enter the golden age, and we can't have a jacket bring us down. Okay, I'm looking at this. So right good now. test, Simone. I like what you did. I think we passed the test. There's a lot of Packers Wink. logos on here. Well, he played for the Packers. Jonathan Owens, he happened to play for the Packers. If he went overseas while she was competing and he was wearing like a uh, a France jacket. Well, she never played cool? for France. But so that doesn't play, make she sense. she was playing in France. In France, but she never played for France. But One of he, those games could have been in Chicago. So if, if it was a jacket with like pictures of Simone Biles in front of, the na- in front of the Eiffel Tower. That doesn't really make sense. Champs-Elysees. That doesn't really make sense. The Look, lose. she's got to update her wardrobe. Again, great test, Simone. She's a nine-time AWL. Someone actually oh, that one, out. one of these just has a, a giant Green Bay Packers well, It could be logo. the back of his shirt. It's just a big Green Bay Packers It could be logo. the back of his shirt. Um, someone did point out that it was actually Huey's fault because he didn't do Simone Biles' nine-time AWL. Huge fan of the show. Huey didn't do when we did uh, fa- uh, Faces in New Places. Mm-hmm. He didn't do Jonathan Owens. So she might have not known that he was on the Bears. Got it. So Huey... Bad job by you, dude. There's a 50% chance she doesn't even know that these two teams have a rivalry. Oh, why do you say that? I mean, she's just... No, they. I, she I, she lived it. She was 
<sighs> Jonathan Owens was on the Packers. Happened to be on how the much, Packers how much last year. Talking about football. Uh, she's been, she went to a lot of games. I think she just uh, was busy winning gold medals for the U.S. Yeah. and being an Olympic hero. You know and she, she hasn't been able to update her wardrobe again. It's preseason. A jacket shouldn't divide us in preseason. There's, well, the there's yeah. also a, if she showed up regular. There's, there's also a very good chance she had the twisties again and she didn't know where she facts, was. Facts. If she showed she up, she might have gotten lost and she thought she was in Green Bay. Week one, I would have been upset. It's preseason yeah. for jackets too. That's true. That's I mean that's a fact. Yep. You got to work out the, all these things. We always talk about quarterbacks working out different facial hair and and weird shit. Patrick Mahomes throwing behind the backs. This is preseason. Max said it perfectly. Who cares? This is like a uh, Caleb Williams throw to Roma Dunze. This is like a, a Daniel Jones pick six of a jacket. Fine. And and yeah, he learned he, that from. was. It was a classic Daniel. I, you know what? I, I don't know what was going through your head then. I was just thinking so badly that I wish it was regular season. Because uh, I would have been able Because that was um, preseason. We've talked about it before. You you basically judge preseason. If your team, if your players do well, you're like preseason matters. If your team does bad, you just ignore it. And you also kind of can't go at other teams for preseason. So it's like Daniel Jones threw that pick six and I wanted to make fun of it. But it's preseason. It's preseason. What went through my head was the interview that we had with uh, somebody that wanted to be the intern on part of my take, and he's, he was a Giants fan. He's like, it's going to be great. Daniel Jones is going to be doing Daniel Jones things. That's right. And then me and Big Cat stopped, and we're like, wait, were you saying Daniel Jones things are, are good things yeah, or good bad, or bad things? Yeah. And he was like, that's good. Daniel Jones doing Daniel Jones things, that's a good thing. This was a Daniel Jones thing. Yes. This was like the quintessential Daniel Jones thing. Big yeah. time. Big time. Um, all right, so I'm happy that we all agree that Simone Biles was just testing and a good test. Yeah, I think she just got lost in the air. Yeah. He just happened to be – it wasn't a Packers jacket. It was a Jonathan Owens jacket who happened to play for the Packers. Very big difference. So, like, if a cop – let's say this was, like, a you know a crime scene and that's the jacket that they found in the crime scene, they would say – we have a Jonathan Owens jacket here. Yes. They'd be like, oh, wow, look at this Jonathan Owens jacket. Simone Biles must have been here. Did it have it's his... got to be the only Jonathan Owens jacket in the world. Did oh, it have his sure. name on it? Yeah, it was all over it. Well, his name, like, because there were pictures of him as a Green Bay Packer where it said Owens. He happened to play Packers. for the Packers. There was a giant just it's Green Bay Packers logo on it's it. It's merely a coincidence. She'll get it straightened out for week one. I guarantee that she doesn't show up with that jacket week one. And if she does jail walking boot for her other foot uh do you guys want to embrace debate yeah let's do it okay embrace debate there's a a hot new debate out there because flag football is going to be in the olympics in 2028 yep and uh we've heard from several nfl players saying that they want to represent the united states in that event like joe burrow said it in part of my take i think tyreek hill has said that he wants to be on that team mm -hmm. uh, one person that's not taking too kindly to this is the quarterback, the current quarterback of the U.S. flag football team. His name is Daryl Hoosh Doucette. Ooh. Hoosh is 5'7". Uh-oh. Immediately. And wait, so a 5'7 a man is upset? A 5'7 man is upset. We got to watch, sound the alarm. Yes. It's he, not good for history. He's very mad. Uh, he said, I think it's disrespectful that they just automatically assume that they're able to just join the Olympic team because of the person that they are. They didn't help grow this game to get to the Olympics. Give the guys who helped this game get to where it's at their respect. So he thinks that if Joe Burrow wanted to step in, he does. He's not going to be good enough at playing flag football because he's too used to playing real football. So okay, um, hmm. So all he wants is respect. He wants respect. So respect, respect. Also, the backup now quarterback, let Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen play quarterback. The backup quarterback is the most popular person in town. Yeah. You just might be getting more popular. This guy, I feel like he timed this incorrectly. I know that it was right after the Olympics. He had to wait till like, r like when they're deciding the team to start saying this stuff. And there are probably some rules that are different about flag football from the NFL that you can exploit if you know the game better. Yeah, you can't but, tackle. But I'm saying if you probably gave Emmanuel Moore might be, uh, he might be really good at yeah, flag football. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but if you if you gave the good NFL players like I'm gonna say two weeks. To practice flag football. I would... Two hours? Two hours to practice An flag hour? football. An hour? They'd probably pick it up. An hour. I think if you took the worst NFL team and then made them the flag football team, they would probably win the gold. Yeah, I, an hour. Yeah. I, I don't... Again, I think he missed time this because now the U.S. flag football is going to be like, we got to get this guy to stop talking. It all came from your boy Jalen Hurts because your boy Jalen Hurts put out a video where he had like a football that was on fire and he's like, we're bringing football to the Olympics. 
insinuating that he would want to be the quarterback of the Olympics. I agree that Jalen Hurts should not be the quarterback. Of the no. Olympics. You can't do the tush push in the Olympics. No. Jalen Hurts should not be our quarterback. No, no. You guys are a part of the media that just hates Jalen Hurts. It's no, fine. I don't. He, Actually, He hasn't PFT, thrown enough interceptions to be good at flag football, Max. Maybe, PFT, maybe he should be because he's so good at seven on seven. That's true. In practice. Yeah, that's and true. Flag football is essentially seven it's on seven, seven on practice. seven football. So enjoy your preseason, buddies. All right. We will. We will. I'm so excited for football. I can't wait. There's a chance. There's a chance that how the Eagles finished last year is how they start this year, buddy. So you want them to lose to the you want them to lose to the Packers week one? Okay, you got me there. Yep. God yeah. Damn it. God damn it. We're gonna stream that game. I'm gonna bet the house on the on the Eagles. What's the line in that game? Ah, fuck! He got me there. No, All I right, can't. I can't, Max. I can't. I would like the Eagles to start fast. I can't wait for the regular season. I can't wait to play you twice, Max. Yeah, that's gonna be a. We're gonna do that. That's a Thursday night rivalry game. I can, we're gonna I, do. I cannot wait, buddy. You don't mean that. I do mean. Yeah, it. he. Means I'm very dumb. Right now, he means it. It's the revenge for little little you small. Yeah, it's revenge. Also, I know that our cornerback's name is Emmanuel Forbes, not Emmanuel Moore. That's okay. I knew that. But Emmanuel Forbes would be excellent at flag yes. football. Yes. Eagles minus two. Love it. Hammer him. Minus two? Hammer him. I'm going to take the alternate line. Yeah, I, th- I'm I think Eagles I think, minus 100. I think they got the number right, wrong team. Oh, you're going to take the Packers? No, Commanders minus two. Oh, no, we're talking about we're Eagles talking Packers what? week one. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I'm saying I can't I can't wait to play you. Oh uh, yeah, that that'll be an interesting game. Is it true that you're not allowed to wear green in Brazil because it's a uh, I think that was a It's a gang thing. thing? That wasn't yeah. true. Okay. I think that was the internet. The thing. internet got us. Jalen Hurts does have a Brazilian ass. That's true. He's got a big old And Saquon. Ass. And Saquon. Yeah. Saquon. Wow, you're bringing the yeah. asses. Yeah. You guys might have the all ass team. They should actually see we should put out a team Brazil at halftime, see. Yeah. Just to see. Just to see if they could compete with the Eagles in the all ass department. They might be able to. Uh, I would like to see. Yeah, I want to know. <laughs> I'd like to at least, I mean, competition is the best. Hank, you would be the least popular person in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> I get arrested. <laughs> Hank, you should. Oh, what does this man have in his pants? Nothing. If you want to be able to dunk, you should go to this game, get a BBL, and then fly back, oh, and you'd be the total package. A jet propulsion BBL? Yeah. Do they have those? No. Oh. That's uh, they do not have jets you can put on your ass. Hank with a big ass would be fire though. Yeah, working would. on it <laughs> would be fire. He'd be, he'd be looking right. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Hank with a huge ass. Uh, okay, anything else before we do? Who's back of the week? I think that's it. Uh, Gardner Minshew is the quarterback. Oh yeah, of the Raiders. Gardner Minshew. Congrats to Gardner Minshew. I think he's the perfect Raiders quarterback. Yeah. Like, if you want to get back to old-school Raiders football, just have a guy with a mustache that doesn't give a fuck. He's going to ball out. He's going to win some games that you won't think he's going to win. Yeah, he's going to give it his best, and it's going to be fun to watch. Yep. Uh, Let's do Who's Back of the Week. It's brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Football season is here, and we can't wait to get out some games this fall with the help of Game Time. The official ticketing partner, Barstool Sports. You know how much we love Game Time. Now with their brand-new Game Time Picks feature, they're making it even easier to get to a game. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Looking for tickets uh, week one. There's You can go to there's all the games. I mean, the Bears are opening at home. It's going to be beautiful weather. Uh, pull up your chosen event and turn on the gt picks setting at the top of the screen or browse the best local game time pick deals near you on your game time app homepage. what are you waiting for we're gonna go we we can't go to the bears titans let's look right now uh game time game time uh we can't go to that game because we're gonna be streaming it but let's just say why don't you pull up your commanders your commanders opening at home uh, they are playing at the Bucks week one. I, I actually did put a bet in already on the commander's season. It is uh, at Arizona. I think it's week three or week four. Okay. I love the commanders in that spot. Took a money line plus 114. Okay, I just hit GT picks on the game time app. Uh, some really good seats in, the, in like 250 range for Bears. Titans week one. Go see Caleb Williams. First game, what should be a Hall of Fame career. Uh, hopefully. Download the game time app today. Use code PMT to easily score great deals with new game time picks. What time is it? It is game time. Uh, We are also brought to you by our friends at Viator. 
Viator uh, is a tool you can use to plan and book travel experiences around the world. Our app and website makes it easy to explore 300,000 travel experiences so you can discover what's out there. No matter where you're traveling, what you're interested in, listen, you can just book a flight and be like, oh, I'm going to try to figure it out there. Or you can do the right thing, and there's nothing worse than a wasted vacation. you got to make sure your vacation, you're, you're planning all the activities, planning the best hotels. That all can happen at Viator. Viator helps you plan the perfect travel experience for you. Free cancellation helps you plan for the unexpected. 300-plus travel uh, experiences to choose from means you can plan something that everyone you're traveling with will enjoy. There's nothing better than getting that perfectly planned vacation, using every second to do something fun or relaxing. 24-7 customer service so you can uh, know you'll get support at any hour if things aren't going as planned. Real time uh, traveler reviews so you get to hear insider information from people who've already been on the experience you're considering. Download the Viator app now. Use code Viator10 for 10% off your b- first booking in the app. Find travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator. Hank, you should be the spokesperson for Viator. Yeah, I'm actually using it this weekend. My parents are coming. We plan to fund activity. Let's Use go. Viator. It was super, super easy. All right. Beautiful. So Viator10, that's V. I-A-T-O-R-10 for 10% off your first booking in the app, Hank. If Hank can do it, you can do it. Uh, who's back of the week, Hank? My who's back of the week is Connor Stallions. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I heard about this. He uh, was hired as a defensive coordinator at Mumford High School, which maybe Huey knows a little more about. It's uh, Detroit High School, uh, but he's back. That's awesome. That's kind of like a promotion, too. Yeah. That's, From well, assistant to D coordinator. I mean, he won a championship in college. But he didn't have a job. That's true. On the books. He did get a job. He got a job. Yeah. So out of all of us. What do you think that interview process was like? I'm going to make sure we're the most prepared team in the state. I'll cheat. Yeah. I would trust Connor Stallions with just about any job, actually. And you got to assume that the you know president, whoever AD is hiring, is like the biggest Michigan fan of all time. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 this bums me out a little bit because I there was a moment in time just, last year where I, I really did think we were going to hire him. At Barstool, and and the way Dave was talking about his conversations with Connor Stallions, like I thought we were going to just give him an office upstairs, black out the 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 uh, glass, and just be like, we don't know what he does, and just have him just hand us reports every now and then about the competition, and just no one ever gets to talk to him, and we don't know what he does, but just like let him do what he does, like the Ernie Adams of Barstool. It would have been great. I, I I'm yeah. kind of bummed out that we don't have him on staff. I mean. I- I honestly think that this guy could be a weapon in the gambling space. Yeah. Like, have, have him do one pick a week, go out, scout whatever you want to scout, unlimited budget. He's a, he's a one-man CIA. Connor Stallion's pick of the week would have been fire. Yeah. Damn. All right, maybe, maybe so we got to root against him. So well, maybe I, he'll I come, back, come here. I can't root against Connor No, Stallions. I like him. Connor Stallion's one of the best stories ever. Uh, Does he have another manifesto? I'm sure he'll get one. I'm sure he came prepared to the interview with oh, like, uh, his sure. cover letter was just a manifesto. manifesto. Yeah. It was in like magazine letters that have been cut out. Yeah. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't show up with like a couple pages stapled together like other people. Yeah, he had a full plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh good who's back. What? H- Hank, you didn't want to say that your boy is back? Oh. Yabu. Yeah, yeah. Yabu got signed. I'm happy for him. What you were, were you not gonna mention that story? No. You were so excited where to get back in the league. Where'd he sign? For now, he's on the Sixers. For now? For now? <laughs> what do you mean for now? And that is how contracts work. He is right. Everyone signs like a finite amount of time for their contract. So, yes, for now, he is on the Sixers. You think him and Embiid are going to get along well? Of course. Okay. I mean, he's got all the confidence after dunking on LeBron. Are you a little scared that this might be the championship piece? No, I mean, that, it's not going to be you know the championship piece, but it's a great addition for the Sixers. You love Yabu. I love him. Right. So I'm happy for him. I, I wanted him back in the NBA. We needed a power forward. I'm happy that we got him. Well, but you when really I saw the LeBron. news, the only thing I cared about was what Hank was thinking. Yeah, and he's upset. Cause because he's... we watched that that <laughs> we watched the French-USA game, and every time Yabu touched the ball, he was he was a Frenchman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, were, you love him so much, and now he's, now he's my guy. Oof. For now. For now. You wanted LeBron. He's mad, he got Max, because he's doing the, he's not giving any eye contact towards your direction. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I, was, I was so happy. Yeah. I was so happy. Yeah, Good call, mad. Max. You yeah. should get a jersey, Max. Maybe put it up in the uh, I should. I should get a jersey. Yeah, you should get a Sixers jersey. Sixers legend. Who, I, no one even knows what other teams he's played you, for in the NBA. You should get a jacket. A Jonathan Owens-type jacket. But it's Sixers. No, I don't think I would. Well, 
I would get it. The Sixers wise. Not, yeah, no, not, Sixers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. right. Yeah. yeah. Yabu. Yeah. Get get a whole jacket of him in Sixers gear. Yeah, never forget I sold uh Big Cat I used to sell Yabo shirts. I sold Yabu shirts. Yeah. How many? Sold two. Oh. <laughs> Maybe that, that's a shirt design for you though, Max. <laughs> yeah, we could repurpose that. Yeah, Absolutely. no, I would love to. Hank would probably yeah. buy one. What was his career like on the Celtics, Hank? <laughs> he was a, I mean, he was a backup, but he was electric personality. He was a great bench guy. He was he was a great player. Do you guys sell B ball Paul? No, we got oh, rid of so that's kind of a perfect yeah. B ball Paul replacement. Where's right. B ball Paul? Uh, I think he's Pistons. Oh, okay. I think he's added. I think he's gotten a little bit better. He was the, the definition of just like he was a he just bang boards and couldn't shoot. Just athlete or no finesse. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Who's back? Good second. Who's back? Hank. Thanks. Thank you, Max. Good producing, Max. Uh, PFT. My who's back of the week is camping. Oh, because we're the boys are going camping this. Oh week. yeah, we are. yeah, we are. Yeah, we're going camping. I think we're leaving Monday night, and we're getting back Thursday, right? Mm-hmm. And we're in an undisclosed location somewhere in Wisconsin, mm-hmm. and we're doing summer camp. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be competing in games. I don't really know what the events are going to be. I know we're going to be sleeping in cabins mm-hmm. um, on a lake. On a lake, fires it's, at night. Yeah. So we're, yeah. the ne- the next two shows you're going to see is us from camp. Is there like a Canadian camp that's across the lake that we can start a rivalry with? Go steal their shit. Maybe across the lake. Or yeah, I guess yeah. Probably not, but yeah, we could try. I would like to start a camp rivalry. Yeah, uh, but yeah, how many people from Barcelona are going? Like sixty. Tw- what? Fifty. I mean, there's like twenty competing. It's yeah. a lot. The boys will be there. Taylor and Will. Very excited about I think that. We, we might get a sober Will on the podcast maybe Friday, just to make sure everybody knows that he's not, in fact, constantly drunk. We should actually we, just get JJ him. check in. We should get him hammered before it. Yeah, there are some people that, are, that, have, that have been internally like I don't understand necessarily what they're scared of, but they're like, what like? Well, what here's, do we need to know about camp? Shane asked if there was going to be plumbing there. Beam's mom texted saying, "Make sure you bring earplugs in case people snore. People will snore for sure. And Even just people. There's some people were like, we were sleeping in cabins. They're like, what? The most concerning part to yeah. me was the was the waiver that they had to sign. They did, oh, I didn't oh, sign it. Oh, so, yeah, no, I, so I didn't it's sign like a, it either. It's a death waiver. Did I sign it? I yeah. think somebody might have forged your and my signature, which is good because. All right, so it's on record I, that if we die, we can sue. I want, I want to retain my right to sue Hank for anything that happens because on this waiver it says you may encounter dangerous insects, you may encounter dangerous weather, you may encounter dangerous bodies of water. How is the weather looking? I haven't looked. Okay, but the insects part look. really freaked me out. I'm excited. It's going to be great. So we're going to be live streaming um, after the yak on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, Thursday will actually be a, a taped finale, but Tuesday and Wednesday will be live. And uh, so tune in. It's going to be great. We're going to be competing. I think it's going to be. I think we're drafting teams. PFT, me versus you. All right. So like salute uh, your shorts. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's good, like a uh, good team bonding. Oh, it's right before be the football season. I'm very excited, and so might yeah, be like remember the Titans. Yeah. So when you see the when you watch if you watch us instead of listening to us, you'll see us in a cabin on Tuesday or Wednesday show and Friday show. It's going to be like training camp. Yeah, yeah kind of like hard, we should, we should do a hard knocks for this. We are going to play a softball game on Tuesday night to see uh, who gets. One, the winner of the team is going to get steak and lobster, and the loser is going to get a pack of hot dogs that they have to cook at a fire. I'm okay with either one. Yeah. But it's just a little competition. Yeah. Competition, you know, gets everyone going. So, yeah, that's gonna it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Um, all right, my who's back of the week is... Uh, Wait, can we watch Hard Knocks? Yes. Okay. We'll find out, out a way. Uh, my who's back of the week is... Memes and the Busters guy, because I think Memes found the Busters guy. You found the Busters guy? We might have. So this comes from Wow <laughs> at Wow Nice Butt Dude. Um, he said, "My friend just revealed to me that he has 1.4 million points at Dave and Busters. He showed me the menu and said, get anything you want. The most expensive meal is 2,200 20, 20, points.' Fuck yeah." So this that, might be the Buster's guy. That's actually, you can retire right now if you're the Buster's guy. 1.4 million points. Yeah. You in the, in tw- what is that? All right, I'm going to do the math real quick. But yeah. You don't, you don't have to work anymore. You can just go live in a Dave and Buster's for the rest of your life. Pretty much. This guy rules. So 2,200 points for the most 636 expensive. meals. If you got the most expensive meal every time. 
Yeah, you could live in there for five years. So yeah, he's got me. He's got he's got free food for a, uh, an entire year if he wants. If you're doing if you're doing like the the fillet every night. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I mean, this guy rules. And also, if this guy's at a Dave and Buster's eating every meal, he's going to be playing games and getting more points at Dave and Buster's. Like they, five years is probably too slow, too like little time. He could probably do ten or fifteen years. Yeah, with all the points he'll be like, accumulating as he eats. Yeah, this guy rules. I want to meet him. Um, hopefully, he is the Buster's guy, the actual Buster's guy. Uh, all right, Huey, finish us off before we get to our interview with Rosillo. My who's back, John Madden. Yes, not oh, yeah. only in uh football video games. Yes, but uh, Nicholas Cage will be. Uh, depicting the uh, depicting him, uh, depicting him, yeah. Uh, uh, betraying him, uh, betraying him, <laughs> yep. portraying him, yeah. yep. In a movie, a biopic, <laughs> uh, uh, directed by David O. Russell, same guy who did a uh, Silver Linings Playbook and The Fighter, a couple other things like that. Um, He's the guy who screams at everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Nicolas Cage, uh, he kind of. I saw a couple pictures of him recently. Kind of, I could see a little Madden in him. Yeah, his face started to sink yeah. a little bit. I'm looking forward to hearing him say "boom." I think yeah. he's going to give a great "boom" as John Madden. Yeah, yeah. I'm I, excited for it's this. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, this it's, is. I mean, John Madden is a national treasure, and Nick yeah. Cage is the perfect guy. Yeah, he's, you're you're basically putting two of my favorite things together: Nick Cage and John Madden. Mm -hmm. I need yeah. a graphic of John of Nick Cage is depicting crossed out. Portraying, crossed out, <laughs> portraying John Madden. Oh, I can't wait to hear Nick Cage describing a turducken. Yes. Wait, he's got to go method for this, right? They I hope they show just the making of the turducken. I also hope they make it like very, like, I could see them trying to find like a dark angle. Yeah. I, I hope they don't do that. I hope, yeah, yeah, let's keep it light. Keep it light. Keep I it fun. I, I hope he's in character as John Madden. I hope that he's up in the booth actually calling games this season as John Madden. Oh, that would be cool. <laughs> That would be cool. Yeah. Make it like when they had Jake Gyllenhaal film yeah, yeah. Uh, roadhouse scenes at a UFC fight. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. Actually have Nicolas Cage like call yes. at halftime. Call game. Yeah, have it have him up there. He hell, he could just be in the booth by himself or with whoever's playing Pat Summerall and then just have him calling the game to nobody. I just want to see him as John Madden up in the booth. Who would be He's Pat gotta be there Summerall. on Thanksgiving. Uh Pat Summerall. Jimmy Fallon. Oh god. Who's hound? Oh god. James Corden. James Corden. Wait, he's like gone, right? Is he? I don't know. I think he stopped his show. Oh, good. Everyone's like, we've had enough of this fat British. Yeah, guy. we. I think we all right? ag yeah. we all agreed to stop playing the prank on jo James Corden that we thought he was good. Yeah, right. Like we don't have we won a war, so we don't have to do this. Yeah. Um. Okay. Good. Good. Who's back? Uh. What? Who's the guy on NFL Fox? NFL Fox. Tom Brady. No, the old guy. Greg Olson, from the Steelers. Terry Bradshaw. Yeah. Maybe Terry Bradshaw. Playing Pat Summerall? Yeah. I don't hate it. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You don't even you don't even have to get him drunk. Yeah. Yeah, just let him be. Uh okay, let's get to our interview with Ryan Rosillo. Before we do that, PFT, you got a couple and we're gonna do the Mount Rushmore best feelings after that. Yeah, before we get into Rosillo, he's brought to you by our great friends at Coors Light. I love Coors Light. The mountains are blue. Coors Light is the absolute best beer in the world. It's great. During the summer, it's great during football season. It's great if you're sneaking out to a baseball game in the middle of the day. Grab an ice-cold Coors Light and follow the Blue Mountains to happiness. It's chill. Time to choose chill. Go to CoorsLight.com slash take. CoorsLight.com slash take. It's the best time of year to have a Coors Light. I had a couple Coors Lights on, uh, on Saturday night at the wedding. We were drinking beers. The mountains were blue. It's great for a wedding season. Love Coors Light. And people sent us some cooler pictures and uh, Blue Mountain Pictures this weekend. Absolutely love those. Check it out, CoorsLight.com slash take, CoorsLight.com slash take. And now, here is Ryan Rosillo. Okay, we now welcome on very special guest, one of our best friends in the whole world. Birthday boy. Birthday boy. It is Ryan Rosillo. Uh, Thanks, boys. You look great. Why'd you wear that? Um, <laughs> well, it's a combination of things. Like mm -hmm. You know how you want to reinvent yourself? Every seven years, Van Pelt told me that one time. Yeah, like Madonna. Like, right. It every like, seven years? Every seven years. I actually saw something recently. I'm really into earnest answers on Twitter lately. Okay. And there was um, this interview, and this woman was like, what voice pattern is this? I want to start maybe talking like this next year. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you got all yourself. sorts. You know, and imagine if you had a friend who was like, what are you just doing? Different speech patterns? Although yeah. I had a roommate in college after Google Hunting, like, blew up. Like, 
he was like, you don't really have that kind of accent. He's like, dude, it's back. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I'm just figuring out light, lighter tones. Pastels. <laughs> Tell me about those shorts. It's a mesh cut. And it, it also, if I were to fall down, I'm good. It yeah. looks like a, a grandmother's sweater. Is that the loosest shirt you've ever worn? I don't think I've ever seen you in a shirt that, like, you, you wear tight shirts. Well, my you arms work are out. Big, yeah. So what am I supposed to do? Flaunt it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But happy birthday. Thanks. Is this how Thanks. you expected to spend your 49th birthday? Uh, is hope, it 49 for real or is it, it is. 49 joke? Haha, you're no, 49 again. You guys will know when it's 5-0. You're Next four, year, I, I would have guessed like forty three. People have said my maturity level; they're blown away. And I was like, "Oh, because I look so good." And they're like, "No, you look well, damn good for forty more because of like just your whole deal." Yeah. Well, I, like, okay. I hope we know when you turn five zero because you. So it is your birthday. Right. We were planning on uh, doing this pod today, and then yesterday you texted me. You said, "Hey, I actually forgot that tomorrow's my birthday." So yeah, yeah. I think we will ha- we should hang out for my birthday. I was like, yeah. How do you forget what day your birthday is? I didn't forget like the, if I had to fill out paperwork, I would still know <laughs> okay. it. But it just was one of the, I just gotten back from Spain. Everything was fucked up. I, it was one of the worst sleeping experiences I've had since I think Pledge Week, uh, Hell Week, pledging. Um, you don't sleep a lot during that. But some of you guys who quit wouldn't even fucking know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Um, it's basically bud straining, yeah. Stay with your heartbreak motel. <laughs> I can't take you seriously. Well, it's better than the hat you guys originally gave me. It's also yeah, it's I, also better than you showing your balls to everyone like the last time. We I were thought in, about in it. Mm-hmm. I thought about it. Yeah, we put like a a, a filter on it so that's not going to happen this time. <laughs> you and Bob Stoops, the two bi- the two biggest like ball reveals on part of my take history. Bob Stoops just had a fucking moose knuckle in our in our fans' face. <laughs> For a half hour. That's good company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. He won a natty. I remember I interviewed Bob. I was in Norman, and it was like right when these offenses were getting out of control. And so everybody was giving up way more points. So the defensive minded coaches were like losing it. And Oklahoma, you know, traditionally stoops the whole deal. And so I was out the night before with, you remember Kevin? Um, was it Kevin White? No, not no, the Kevin receiver. White. No, come no. on, Hall of Famer. Kevin Wilson, Kevin yeah. Wilson, the offensive coordinator, ended up being the head coach at Indiana. So, like, somebody boots on the ground was like, "Do you want to go out drinking with these guys in Norman?" And I went, "Yeah, fuck it." Like, the staff will be there. So I'm having a few beers, and it's a bunch of the guys in the staff, and they were like, "You interview, you know, you got Bob tomorrow?" And I was like, "Yeah, I have 15 minutes with Bob in his office." And they were like, "Well, let's go over the questions. Let's prep." And these guys have been drinking; they were like ready to go. And I, you know, I prepped it out. They're like, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And then I got to like, hey, I've noticed like on average you're giving up way more yardage per play than you ever have before. Like what's going on with your secondary? And can you actually like hang with the SEC? And they're like, oh, my God, that's the, he's going to kill you. You can't ask him that question. <laughs> and so I did ask him it, and he hated it. And we were in his office. I remember he was like, what you fail to realize is, <laughs> you know. But he did make a good point that they were just running so many more plays. He had a lot of watches, too, from well, all the bowl games. Like, what, is, what does that have to do with his balls, though? Well, I, I like that he stuck up for himself. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So I think there's some similarities there. That's yeah. probably why he came back to the USFL. They don't score shit there. Yeah. Nobody gets scored on because the offenses are bad. Stoops, he, Stoops, though, really did have, like, a complete makeover. Like, he went from, you know, if you were an Oklahoma guy, you loved him. Right. He could kind of give a shit about anybody else. And then once he... I mean, it took him a little bit longer, or maybe it was just transcendent. Maybe it's going to be what we see with Belichick. Like, everybody's going to love the lovable Belichick now. Right. And you're going to be like, all right, but well, what, do you, what does that mean? Stoops also has that, I mean, the crazy story is his dad died of a heart attack while coaching, like, on the sidelines. So his whole thing was like, I'm going to retire before, like, I get to that point. So, yeah, that just, that's heavy. That yeah. just got. But I ended up really liking him, I, and I didn't in the beginning. And okay. maybe that's what people think of me when they see my balls. No, no. I, when I see your balls, I think just all I think is balls. Put yeah, away. I, I, I are... actually think, okay, so he didn't do steroids. Thanks, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because we would be able to tell. <laughs> all right, so happy birthday. And I, hey, thanks for bumping Trump for me this week. Oh, hey. yeah, no, no problem. Were you guys supposed to have him on? Oh, yeah, we, we were. were. We are going to have well, him on, but we, we have actually have a very surprise birthday guest for you. Donald Trump. Yeah. Bring him out. <laughs> Here he is. We actually, no, we, we did want to have you on, though, because 
Um, you we want don't to talk about the race. Well, we don't dip, dip into politics, but we wanted to do a little election preview with you. So yeah, okay. Um, who you got? Thoughts? What do you think? What do you think is going to happen in Pennsylvania? Uh, <laughs> Well, I think a snapshot of any polling number right now is this the is dumbest where Ryan's going to really answer <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, like, no. It it was like if you look at the Vegas odds, which I actually think are really interesting uh-huh. with it. Yep. the swings in a very short amount of time. It's because no one no one side can keep their shit together for more than three days. For like, yeah, but right. but who is who are the swing votes right now? Like, who has not made up their mind? Uh... Like what is it? Wh- Pennsylvania? Yeah, is one it, county in Wisconsin. Isn't it always Wisconsin? your place, Wisconsin? Oh, uh, it's Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin Waukesha Michigan. County. Yeah, this is where we're all going to expose ourselves as yeah. morons. Florida's uh, up for grabs, that's what they said. Uh, that's what they say. That's just one guy tweeted, he's like, I think Florida's up for grabs. He's like, all right, dude. I do love the polling of one, though. They'll like have, and I'm talking to either CNN or Fox. They'll just throw somebody in some place. Like, there's a perfect example. I think there was somebody from Fox went to interview, like, five women that if you hooked up with, you would never tell anyone ever in your entire <laughs> life, okay? And I'm just trying to paint a picture here. I hear you. And so they were like, is Harris a candidate for you? Does, does she speak to you? You know, woman, woman to woman here. And they were all like, no, she sucks. <laughs> She's an idiot. And I was like, okay. And then the reporters like, did any of you vote for Hillary? And they're like, nope, couldn't stand her. <laughs> so you're like, okay. And then it gets play. Yeah. And you're like, man, this this Harris is not as popular. You're like, you found five yeah. in fucking Arkansas that were never voting for her anyway. It's, like what mm-hmm. what it's when uh when people who are like highly political online do uh Twitter polls. Like Clay Travis will be like, Who are you voting for tomorrow? And it's like, well, that's your audience. Like if I if I did a tw- poll, be like, you know. Do you like the Bears or the Packers more? Yeah, see, that right. one might be no, but might see, be a lot of Packers. The, fans the polling of one shit that we see, yeah, where like they had another one where it was a, a white guy in a black barber shop, and they were that like, was Harris. That was so funny. <laughs> it was so fucked up, and he's wearing like a Jordan yeah, T-shirt. Yeah, the like guy's trying to fit in. Wait, he was trying whoa, to fit whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> this guy was trying to fit in. He put a Jordan T-shirt on underneath a sport coat. Yeah, right. And yeah, then right. he went to a barber. Not shop. Not an art. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, "Do yeah. you guys think that Kamala Harris is black?" Yeah. Go on. And it was the most uncomfortable <laughs> minute of TV. Right, and then, like, four guys may not like her, and then he tosses it back to the studio. We're like, well, this election's a wrap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We just talked. So I don't, I don't understand, like, the polling of one phenomenon that we have where this is kind of my point about the Super Bowl. I say this, like, we shouldn't ever be allowed on the air hours after the Super Bowl. Because in that window, Ooh. we're incapable of having any perspective. And it's why I always make fun of, like, after championships. So I actually think the rate, of speed that we have with information is making us dumber. Oh yeah. And this isn't like the most enlightening thing you're ever going to hear, but I don't think whether it's how you feel about a team historically or a player and their accomplishments historically, but if you relate it to like what's happening right now in an election year, you're like, I don't know that the tides are turning nearly as fast as everybody's pretending as it does day to day. It's every, yeah, everything is, is, fucking madness uh, I, I love it when you do the uh is this the greatest championship team of all time yeah like seconds after it's over and Although, I, get, I get people to earnestly be like because i'll the joke is always like you have to ask yeah, yeah you do yeah you always have right. to ask so that that was actually my next question i had lsu people mad at me being like are you serious what about 19 lsu and i'm like dude you explain it to me yeah, you're an lsu yeah, guy. yeah well you guys are the biggest lsu guys yeah we are yeah. day one hurt you we were coach o guys that stung are we're you, not we're not LSU guys. Well, that's Brian why Kelly. it's stunk. You, you, are well, you still I mean, Brian we Kelly? We were very open. Well, you, we talked about it. You He's like BK? Friends. I like BK a lot. You like all of BK? I'm not getting a summer house with him, but I mean, I like him, and he's always been really good to me. Okay. Mm-hmm. You family? So. Y'all fam? Y'all can? <laughs> hey. <laughs> There's nothing I can say. I, I did have a question for you, Ryan. Are, are we sure the Celtics are good? Here's my question. If they win the gold, does that mean the Celtics are even better? Well, it's interesting oh, you brought that up, Ryan, because yeah. I, I did a little research uh, just before you sat down here. I went back through some of your recent takes. Um, this was from <laughs> this good. I didn't know uh, this was happening. early July. Ooh. You tweeted, is Tatum the best international player in the world? Mm. <laughs> no, I didn't. You, you tweeted that. Well, you want to know why? Is because Simmons was saying that he is the best international player, 
And so then I was making fun of it. Okay. In the tweet. Didn't get that. Yeah. You don't get that context. No, there was supposed to, that was only for the audience of the I Sunday. Bill, okay, let's let's, went on, let's let's have an actual Bill intelligent. Went on with Joe House and said that Tatum should get LeBron's minutes. Okay. Well, he also it. with me was like, "Who's going to start, Tatum or LeBron?" I was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> and he was making the case the that question. Tatum was the best international. Like his whole thing was he's the best international player. I laughed. We argued. It was fine. But then I used it in a tweet. Got oh. it. Yeah. Got it. So, um, yeah. That kind of takes the the sting out of it a little bit, then. Yeah, especially when you get a DNP. Mm. That yeah. would have been good. You could have made me look bad. Yeah. So, uh, do you, is the U.S. still good at basketball, or is it just Mickey Mouse? Uh, I don't understand what you're asking. We have the easiest schedule of all time. Mm. I'm not sure this team's good. Who are we supposed to play? When I said we, someone mm-hmm. better. Yeah, uh, Greece. How's your borders are? So I I look at listen, like Canada, right? Like listen, women don't owe me shit. <laughs> That's so profound. <laughs> For the record, if you're listening to this, I'm wearing the hat that says women don't owe me shit because it was Ryan's hat. And I then he, wear it. he didn't yeah. want to wear it. Yeah. I didn't want to wear it after my after uh, what? well now. Yeah. What does it say? Women, oh, don't don't, owe you women don't know you shit. Oh, wait. Oh. I should have worn it. Yeah. yeah. That's a great hat. <laughs> oh, that's actually, yeah. yeah. You're standing with women. Not yeah. pan, that's not a look pander at, hat at well, all. Look at me. Ryan refused to wear this hat. Can you believe We're that? We're so misogynistic. We read it a totally <laughs> different way. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oops. Women don't owe you shit. That's, dude. Hey, I wish. Way to stand up. Your intern is so proud of himself yeah, right now. Oh yeah. He's dying. Huey, he's a gem. Yeah. He's a young John Candy. He's just looking at us. He's so happy with these outfits. <laughs> yes. that had this, you know, that's a lot of power. And Big WNBA guy. How do you feel about Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark? You want to say something, Huey? What do, you, what do you think about that Rookie of the Year race? He has a podcast. It was called NBA Hole. Uh, there was no, NBA Asshole. Yeah. And, yeah, and then... And then uh, when he realized WNBA was a league, what, last year? Yeah. He added the W. Yeah, for the whole. So it's NBA whole, how W-H-O-L-E. That, how did it do? Did it do any numbers? 45 people. Yeah. Fucking and how out. many of those it's were favorite you number. listening back? I listened to it back like three times, two or three times. You, get, you understand how I was like talking and stuff, my beats. And get but then, those. Yeah. Yeah. then he deleted it. It's he, tough to do. He accidentally deleted 200 episodes. Brutal. Yeah, it might be better though in the long run. Yeah, mm-hmm. true. Right, Based so on yeah. what you guys are telling me, Angel yes. Reese. Yeah, Angel, I love Angel Reese. Yeah, I think yeah. she like uh, she she has like Rodman level rebounding. Yeah, uh, I fucking love her. I think Caitlin Clark potential to be the face of the league. She's not there today. She won't be there tomorrow. She's three four years away from being half of that. She'll be all right. She'll get her way up. But Angel, Angel's my baby girl. She'll be a twenty and ten. Okay, nice. <laughs> every nice. every day. She'll so be a you're voting her rookie of the year if you had a vote. If I had, to, yeah. If I had, wow. he should have a vote. Yeah. Yeah, he clearly knows ball. Would you yeah. call her baby girl in a press conference? Because no, 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 no. That would be <laughs> behind yourself? closed doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be behind <laughs> closed doors. Yeah. Okay, good job, Huey. Thank you. Big right. WNBA guy. Angel right. yeah. baby girl. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough to go back and listen to yourself in the beginning. He did it all the time. Then you he deleted those... his own episodes. I mean, it just makes you have to work that much harder to build up the library again. Yeah, I have a, I have, I have a take uh, that I would like to take back. That I think you were right. Um, conference realignment. Yeah. I did that rant again today. Yeah, it had been eight. You months. might you might be right on that. Thirty three different teams. You might be right. Thirty three teams have changed conferences since two thousand one. Yeah. Now my take has always been I'm going to watch it no matter what, and I love college football and I agree no matter with what. You. But you are right that uh, this is the first season where I'm like, what what the fuck's going on? Like, and it's not even it's the USC UCLA, it's the Texas Oklahoma. It just feels off. Feels weird. My point was always this. Okay, it's much like the playing game. I didn't think it was right for a team in certain years with the 10 seed is going to have such an abysmal record compared to the team that has the 7 seed. And you're like, you still have to kind of prove yourself one more time, mm-hmm. even though it's weighted to win one game at home and then another chance. But, like, if the 10 seed just, I don't know, the right thing happens, you're going to go, okay, so a team with 36 wins gets into the playoffs. The right. team with 50 isn't. Remember that happened to the Cardinals and the Dodgers? They had to, like, the way the baseball playoffs were one year, they both had, like, almost 100 wins. They had to play one mm-hmm. game. And you go, what the fuck is the point there was, of what we just did for six months? That's yeah. the stuff I cannot stand. There was a 2015 year where the Cardinals, Cubs, and Pirates all had, I think it was, like, 98 wins. And then we beat the Pirates in the one-game playoff. And it was like, 
They won 98 games. How is this possible? Yeah, and now you're done. Yeah, you're right, done. Like, right. we just did this for six months. So my point is that, like, when the Lakers and, and Golden State were going at it in that awesome Curry-LeBron playing game, I wasn't having a bad time watching it. Right. That's not the point. The point is the structure, that it exists. And it's the same thing with playoff expansion. It's the same thing with all the realignment. Like, I'm still going to watch for 12-plus hours on Saturday. But what I loved about the sport – was that a Pac-12 game looked like a Pac-12 game. And, now, and then culturally, when you would visit all of these different yeah. places, the fan bases were lined in a very conference. Like, it just made sense. And and I remember Cannell telling me that the whole conference thing was an SEC creation. And I'm like, dude, I am telling you right now, maybe I'm guilty of the pulling of one thing here again, but when I was like a crazy Big East guy in the 80s and 90s as a kid and then in college, like, I hated Syracuse and Georgetown because right. I love St. John's. But I still wanted to see Cuse and Georgetown beat ACC schools. Right, right. And it was kind of this fun additive thing for the tournament. And look, maybe it won't matter. Maybe younger people will just be desensitized to the whole thing. But when the ACC Twitter feed is congratulating Katie Ledecky saying the Olympians are made here, you're just like, what I, the fuck? The death of the Pac 12 is really the part of it. Like, Did you I, see I it on dot com? Did you hear my. The sta- they have the standings, Pac-12 standings, and it's the two teams. Yeah. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. Well, it not sucks. even embarrassing. It's sad. It's sad. It's it is sad. Well, thank that, you. You're right. So you were right about that. And, thank you. Uh, I just felt like you were part of the Habs, and the Habs had a hard time. That's a, I, I admitted that. One percenter. Though. I admitted yeah. that. I, I admitted if I you rooted did. for a team that if I was an Oklahoma State fan, I would feel a lot different than being a Wisconsin fan, being like, I don't think. But you know what? Now, with how crazy it is, I can see a world where Wisconsin does get left out with it, whatever the next iteration is. Yeah, see, that's the other part that sucks is that there's, even though it's expanded, so I'm, I'm going to lose the argument here because you're going to get some teams in, but like the Penn State model of the last couple of years, where I'll just be like, who have you beat that's actually really good right. in the last couple of years? Because yeah. as soon as you actually play somebody that has athletes that can match or outmatch your athletes, then you just don't win those games. Yeah. It's going on a couple of years, but at the end of the year, you're like, oh, cool, we're 9-3 and three or we're... You know, eleven and two because we, we won our bowl. We game. beat undefeated right. Iowa at home. You know, right. thirty to nothing. Exactly, and because Iowa finds a way because of how bad that side of the Big Ten has been. I now miss the Big Ten West. Yeah, because I mean, it's it it's awesome fun. if you're decent because you're like <laughs> now we're gonna win seven games, I know. Mm-hmm. and if we win the two non conferences that aren't Power Fives, then that's nine wins, and we don't even know if we're any fucking good. And then you're ranked sixteenth, and then Penn State beats you, and then it's like Penn. Wow, great Penn job. State, yeah, and. I guess, like, that team, it's not going to happen now because the conferences are too tough between the Big Ten and the SEC, but I I think there's going to be some expansion, like, playoff slots where we're going to be arguing about teams that may not have beaten anybody right. remotely yeah. good. And they, all, they, all they did long. was lose close to good teams. And, yeah. and like, what, oh, well, they lost down by 14 six and, to Ohio yeah, State. Down 14, yeah. and, like, they don't care that <laughs> yeah. you score the touchdown. Yeah, right. what we'll see is maybe, maybe a couple, like, very entertaining early matchups where the two teams are like similarly mismatched against each other and then the top 4 teams are just going to kick the shit out of everybody in the second round of it. But we might get one more fun week of college football. We're gonna, look, it's it's still going to be fun. Yeah. Like everybody that's been on me about oh, why don't you want expansion? We have it in the other division or the other levels of college football and I go, "Okay, but I'm still obviously I'm not going to approach him like, hey, let me know when the first round's over because right. I'm mad about it. Right. There's still going to be great games. Watch. It's the same thing as yeah. the plan. I just and home games are going to be cool. But That's I think it's a I, really fun added wrinkle. I think it kind of. I almost like the false hope sometimes of a Wisconsin yeah. in the right year, yeah. or if the SEC East was down and this is like pre Georgia, post Florida in that window where they weren't great there for a little while. But now whoever that team is is like. Buried. Yeah. Yeah. Buried. No, I mean, it's set up for uh, like they did a, I think they went back 20 years and they're like, who would have made the playoffs? And Wisconsin would have made it like seven out of the 20 years. Yeah. This is actually great for just, Penn State. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, and, Penn and State's when, the, the, the quintessential team that will benefit from this. And people will say to me all the time, they're like, oh, well, what about the NFL? I'd be like, you think I love a nine and seven, nine and seven team like playing in the conference championship? Yeah. I don't actually. Yeah. But yeah. the NFL is different because you've had wild card teams make those runs and win Super Bowls. So. Like if you get it, healthy, it does it, the the mar, the the difference between the best team in the NFL and the worst team in the NFL is a lot smaller than the best team. Absolutely, in college football and absolutely. Worst team. But like I would ask, like going into Ohio State, Michigan this year, if they're both really, really good, yeah. How are you going to possibly feel the same way? And they're going to play again next week. Sta- nothing's at stake, right? Yeah. Like how do, how does that not hurt? 
And this is the thing I cannot answer. I can't answer it with live rights for the NBA or the NFL or like even people were theorizing like we had even heard like how come these owners are selling these teams like oh wait are they hearing that the new tv deal actually isn't going to be that good and you were hearing like a couple more teams were even available that haven't even been sold yet and i'm thinking like oh wait this might be the bubble like right. everybody's a bubble expert post a big short and everybody just keeps bubble 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 mm -hmm. read the book great job mm -hmm. read boomerang you love that one. what's that that was the other michael Is lewis it, book. i only read michael lewis books because they always make movies they never did. I don't think Boomerang's a tough script. Maybe McKay can pull right, that so one. Then off. I probably won't do it. So what's Boomerang? Boomerang is, I think, the extra research involved with like different economic failures around the world, Ooh. and it's so great because we're also reading it after the result. So it feels like every single page is like, what they thought this like this is the dumbest idea ever. Like they were going to start some resort, I think, in Ireland, and it was like near the water. And there was like this one sheep farmer who lived there and they tried to start it all up and it was a fucking disaster. And then the guy was like, I've lived here my whole life and I've never wanted to be here one day. I didn't know why a resort was <laughs> there. And then Greece during their nonsense. They don't pay yeah. taxes. Yeah, and when I went to visit Greece, which was a long time ago, I was I just finished Boomerang. So I was like, hey, what's the story with you guys? I know it's not a popular topic for me and my brand, but I was like, what's the story <laughs> well, with you Well, these are international guys? taxes. Yeah, yeah. You I was can like, do that. <laughs> I was like, what's up with you guys here? You're like, you don't you don't pay any taxes? And every guy I met was the only guy in Greece that paid his taxes. <laughs> He's like, no, I do, I do, I do, I do. I gotta read Boomerang then. Yeah. Boomerang. Although, didn't Michael Lewis get Oh no, it was the it was the blind side. It came out way out. How did that not come out right away that he was like good friends with the Tuies? That was the whole thing. Oh yeah, I don't that know. That all came out like yeah, last yeah. year where it's like, oh, actually he's like very good friends with the family and he just never said that. I love Michael Lewis books. But, oh, they're great. But, and I've had him on, and I love the he's been nice enough to come on with me. But like when I read Moneyball, the first thing I thought of was like, how come Barry Zito, Hudson, and Mulder never get fucking mentioned? And right. or like, uh, Tejada, right? Yeah, but it was really about like you have three ones in your rotation. Yeah, right. They're all the, making in, no by money. Far right? the That's best why right. you drafted baseball. great pitchers. <laughs> like they did, they made the entire movie too. They didn't even show them on screen. I don't think. Right, dude. They're they're not they might have showed Mulder on the back, and it just like, kind of speaks second. to like how we can all work. Like somebody had said this recently about John Oliver. Like John Oliver's monologues are probably the best in the business. Oh, I saw this. All right, and they're unbelievably convincing until he does the one on the topic that you, you know. know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if he did an NBA one, because my range is rather limited, I was just trying to check the pre mark in Japan. Going, I don't know what I'm fucking doing. <laughs> like, just go to bed. Uh, <laughs> like, wait. So our yen debt is what? Be like, carry the tube. Be like, you're fucked. Just turn this off. Um, when I saw that Oliver point, I was like, yeah, maybe if yeah. I knew more about you know, international smuggling. Yeah. But I don't. But goddamn an accent. Yeah, it's and, the accent. And a great a great but setup I, on HBO. I can't hang with that. I saw that and then it bummed me out because then I thought about people who listen to us who are experts in whatever we're talking about. Yeah, but you guys you admit when you're not. That's what you're yeah, we're very, actually very rarely wrong though. The craziest the cra True. Tr very rarely. The craziest thing to me is that like when we go when we travel, the amount of like NFL scouts or like college football like coaches say they listen. I'm like, why? Like, wh how could you just laugh at how stupid we sound? Like, you have to mm -hmm. think we're the dumbest people in the world. But you're not presenting yourself like the rest of us. Like, I try to present myself as like I've got it, and if I'm wrong, it only means the data was wrong, not the analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I think the scouts and coaches like us because they they listen also to like serious sports talk radio with people that present themselves as geniuses yeah. and then we are just the much much more dumb version of that right hey look when a gm says he listens i apologize too yeah I'm like oh, i always because... feel bad i'm like there's no way that we're saying anything that you think is interesting because think about like the way the media is covered like if they're in the world of podcasting and you or i big cat will text each other and be like can you believe like did you see this like, here's a perfect example. Fuck it, I'll just say it, because I think it's the funniest leverage leak of all time. There was an article recently about Stephen A's new contract, and it was like, if they can't figure it out, he may go to politics, he may go late night, or he could get into acting. And you're like, you know what? You're like, that's one where you push back okay. and go, I mean, he's going to sign for a huge number because he's right. really good, and he's really valuable, and he draws eyeballs, whether you love him or hate him. Like, he, he works. Right. But it's... acting, because he was on General Hospital a couple <laughs> yeah. episodes, like, come on. We should do so, that for us ourselves next contract. No, after, like, they might do porn. After I saw that, I was like, you know, whenever I'm up here, I'm gonna I'm gonna leak I'm gonna leak something to somebody I don't like. Yeah. But when you see our world covered, 
it makes you just cringe yeah you're like that's not even what happened it's not how it and works. so though even when we talk about sports for our entire professional lives like i can watch a game and have a feeling about a player but the number of times where somebody's been nice enough to be like hey i heard about like what you said and i understand how you got there but actually like this guy was like doing this and then this other thing and you're just like fucking a yeah, yeah we have no clue yeah no clue, have no clue. On. so don't listen anymore well, unsubscribe except skip bayless he knows what he's talking about R.I.P. Skip Bayless. Are you okay? Uh, no, I'm not okay. Thank I you for I think you guys asking. appreciated yeah. it way more than I ever thought uh, you would have. I, what do you mean? Him. His whole thing. Well, I never was the biggest Skip guy. PFT is more of a Skip guy. I, I, you just appreciate I appreciate him. That's yeah, exactly yeah. right. I, I don't like Skip Bayless. I don't, although he was very nice to me the one time I met him. It was at, it was, we were in Bristol. Yeah, you got some juice though, dude. I did, no, no, I don't. This is everybody, pre-juice. This is, everybody was kissing your ass this is, when you showed up. No, no this no. is pre-juice. Pre-juice. This is pre-us showing up. Pre-juice. What's the date of juice? Uh, well, this was 2000... AJ, after juice. 2017 was probably the date of juice. This was 2014. Yeah, so, so, t- yeah, so very pre-juice. Yeah, so no one knew what I looked like. What were like. you guys even doing there? So I went up there because we won an auction to do a behind-the-scenes tour of First Take. And so I went up there. I just sat. I watched them tape the show, which was wonderful. It was the day that um, what's the, the dude's name on the Jets punched Geno Smith in the face? Um, uh, EK, EK yeah. in Impala or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah broke his Nailed jaw, it. and then they had a, a very uh, mature conversation about that. Skip and Stephen A. just yelled at each other for about three hours, and then afterwards, I went up, introduced myself to him, and then Skip just sat down, started asking me about like where I'm from. What teams I like. So he and didn't we know talked. you were in the media, though. No, he just thought you were random. He, he thought I was a was random a guy. Fan. But we talked for like, He's fi- a fan, though. Yeah. like 15 minutes and just had like a conversation. He didn't have to do that. So I was like, okay, Skip seems like a good, a good guy. But no, I've never been like a fan of Skip, but I appreciate how crazy he is. Yeah. And what an insane person to have on TV. We're so lucky to get watch this guy. The one person in the history of the world that thinks that LeBron sucks and Tim Tebow is great. And there's nobody else that does that. But he truly believes that. Uh, I don't know if he truly believes it. You're never going to get me there. You don't think so? Yeah, that's where I always falter, where I'm like, I think he's... He does a good job. When he said Bronny's more clutch because of Call of Duty, like... That's a great yep. take. It's unbelievable. That's a great take. I mean, take. I give him credit for getting <laughs> great there. Great take. Because I wasn't I wasn't going to workshop that one on the <laughs> no. pad at any point. And, well, he, only, he beat Grant Williams, who I still don't know why Grant Williams is there. I had to double check to make sure that he wasn't in the summer league still. Well, not in summer league, but apparently he like wouldn't leave the Call of Duty booth, <laughs> which is crazy for like days. <laughs> I don't that, know. I'm not. Dog? I'm not Does reporting he have that dog that. in him? Yeah, maybe he just was like, "Look, you guys can get shots up. I will too." Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the fact that Bronny goes by Bronny, like in the record in the uh, the box score? It's B James. It's not L James. I hadn't really thought about it a lot. Yeah, you should consider our mind when we saw it. We're going to get back to Ryan Russillo in a second. He's brought to you by our great friends over at Chevy. There's a reason why we've never done a Mount Rushmore pickup trucks. That's because, for part of my take, there's only one pickup truck. That's the Chevy Silverado. Why is that? Well, Silverado is a partner. They've been a partner with us. They'll be a partner with you. They're a partner that you can depend on. We've all spent time driving, using the Silverado for all kinds of of part-of-my-take jobs, adventures, other shenanigans. Silverado has been our ride for a cross-country trip to the big game. Silverado helped us dig the biggest hole ever in the state of Ohio last year at Grit Week. Silverado helped us give fullbacks the recognition that they deserve with the Low Man Award. And this year, Silverado went out west with us for our latest Grit Week. We drove it all around Southern California, drove it to the ocean, drove it to the golf course, drove it to Rams training camp and back. Silverado brings the grit. It's legendary grit. It's paired with modern truck tech inside and out. Massive screens. I'm talking big, big screens inside this truck. Up to eight cameras with 14 different views to help make driving, towing, and parking all easier. Four different powertrain choices and the available multi-flex tailgate so you can work and play smarter, not harder. So go over to Chevy.com, build your own Silverado, check out all the current offers on Silverado, discover a world of strength and capability behind the wheel of our favorite truck. That would be the legendary Chevy Silverado. Ron Russillo is also brought to you by our good friends at BetterHelp. Part of my take is sponsored by BetterHelp. When your schedule is packed with kids' activities, big work projects, and more, it's easy to let your priorities slip. Even when we know what makes us happy, it's hard to make time for it. But when you feel like you have no time for yourself, non-negotiables like therapy are more important than ever. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash PMT. Now here's more Ryan Rosillo. By the way, another take that you were right about. Uh, bad idea for us to try to do anything with ESPN. That was just me being competitive. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, was our juice days. Yeah. You, know, you that, actually didn't say it was a bad idea. You just were like, be careful. I said, be careful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. Because one of the most fucked up things that happened when you guys were brought in, because it was hilarious. Like there's, and I think Big Cat and I have talked about this. I don't know if PFT and I, remember we were talking about Moneyball and somehow we ended up here, but I don't mind. We were talking bubbles. I'm still aware, but I don't care anymore because this is more fun. So when Big Cat and PFT showed up to ESPN, like, because the show was already going to happen. Right. Right. And there was a guy in the talent department who I thought was like my guy. And everybody on air was always trying to find, like, their person in the talent department to be like, hey, like, when I'm up, can you, can you, not that they were going to name the price, but, like, you needed a voice in the room. That was always the goal of ESPN. I need somebody with some fucking juice who has a voice in the room that's going to be an advocate for me. And if you don't have that, it's never going to happen for you there. But they were also incredibly obsessed with whoever didn't work there and was killing. Mm -hmm. So there was a stretch where, like, you guys are blowing up and they're thinking of, like, how do we just hook into this right and at that point i still would stay like espn has the draw like i still think espn is an incredible opportunity for yeah, people that want to be on i mean let's course. not let's not there's something about being on tv on live tv that hey, man it, it's it, still ESPN. it goes a lot of places that podcasts don't go whatever you know you can you're gonna have issues no matter where you work okay and when it's front facing it also like puts an added pressure on it but however i felt about like bigger picture things when i walked in the door that day and was like, I'm going to talk sports for three hours. Like it was, I didn't have many just was never like, I can't believe I have to work today. Right. Okay. Right. But when you guys were walking around, cause I'll never forget this. Now there's buzzing and now it's every fucking on air guy going, what's going on with those guys? Like they're <laughs> going to be doing something here. Like what's up? And we're becoming friends and we see each other. We hug it out. And I'm kind of like, Oh, and I knew I was never going to get like any special stuff, so I, I didn't get too upset about it. And then a guy in the talent department was like, you're boys with them? And I was like, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> we're boys. He's like, I got to get Big Cat's cell phone number because I want to like talk to him. And I was like, yeah, like fucking done. I'll get you on a text thread tonight. And so the day wraps up. I think we were you were around or something. Yeah. You came back to see me at the studio and uh, another like higher up saw that we were hugging it out in the cafeteria or something, and he was like, "Is there any way you can get those two guys to like join you once a week? Like your contract's coming up, but like if you could lock those guys in to like visit you once a week." I'm like, "I don't know. That might be kind of a big asker in New York, like every week." And so the guy that asked me to get your number, I go to Big Cat and I'm like, "Hey, you got to talk to this guy. He's really plugged in, kind of knows what's going on." And Big Cat's like. Yeah, dude, I've been talking to him for a month. He already negotiated a deal for the Van Talk TV show. Yeah. And I was like, and what he was doing is he was actually covering his bases, with trying, to, yeah, trying yeah. to make me seem like he had nothing to do with giving yeah, yeah. you guys mm-hmm. the opportunity. Because I would have been somebody, they would have gone like, oh, Rosillo's going to be pissed when they get this opportunity. Right. And the reality is, is like, that was not an opportunity that I was going to be given. Right. Like, I couldn't be mad about you guys getting a chance to shine there. We were so fucking dumb. Yeah, we were dumb. We were but so that's, dumb. That's also so shitty. You should have yeah. gotten paid for the entire thing. That's shitty that they go, like, they're so concerned about playing the internal mind games and politics that they will, like, gaslight you into thinking that things are happening one way when they've been operating like Game of Thrones behind the scenes. They, yeah, like, Nobody should truth, want to work at a place like that. The truth, and I'm not even saying it's specific to them, I just think it's a management tactic. It's like, wait, the truth of... Like, this is way worse than just, right. hey, we gave these guys a TV show, and, like, I know you want a different opportunity. But at that point, like, I knew, and I didn't want to get into all this stuff again. It's just that I told you, look out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, And we were out. dumb. Do you remember we the list? We were so dumb. Do you remember the list of stuff that you gave us when you brought us on onto your radio show the first time? And it was, like, bringing outdoor cats inside at ESPN Radio. And they, you guys had a very helpful list of things that we couldn't say or do. On the air, do you remember that? 
I don't know uh, one if of them, I wrote it. I think I was asked to give it to you guys, w- One right? of them was literally no peeing. Yeah. We weren't allowed to pee in the studio. <laughs> and they yeah. had to write that down. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't write that. <laughs> Which, because that was Piss oh, Dogs era. No, no, it wasn't. This was not your doing. No, no. It was like, I don't know if it was uh, production or if you it You know was... what would have been great? Because you don't know this at the time. It's still ESPN. You're kind of figuring it out. But I mean, the, the joy in all of this story is that ultimately you didn't need any of it. No, it, it's the best thing. It, it, right. It, whenever we say it. But I they think... had to ask you to not yeah. piss. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. That's where we. It's and... funny that they thought like. Yeah. We should we should put this in writing, and that we couldn't <laughs> burn, we couldn't light. Somebody should have pushed back. Online. You should have yeah. Hank be like, "Hey, most of this is <laughs> yeah. good." The pee thing, the piss thing. I'm gonna have my attorney. We like specifically. <laughs> no, we, yeah. we. It's it sounds cliche, but every time I, anyone asks me, I'm like, "That was literally the best thing that could happen to us because we learned it very fast early on that our audience is our audience, and we don't need anyone else." And it's like that, and when, timing wise too, though right. it was right. Like if it would have been ten years prior, you would have needed it, correct? Yeah. Um, and actually, you would have had the entry point that you have now because ten years ago, well, I don't know, we can get into no, this but it's podcast. true. But like the stuff moves so fast, and you know, whenever I was up, I remember there were times where it was like it was getting down to the deadline of like me having to say yes or say no, and you'd want your ego to get in the way, and then I'd be like, dude, if you don't get to go back, and you're gonna be like starting your morning watching Sports Center, like. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I don't care if she dates somebody else. You're like, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I would just resign. Yeah. Until I didn't have to anymore. And uh, But whatever. we appreciate you having our back. There's only yeah. a couple people. Well, um, I, I do mean that. Like, I think there's always a lot of competitiveness and there's, I think sometimes jealousy can be good. Like, it can be a driving force you. if, yeah, you're, yeah. if you're competitive, but you don't want to let jealousy start telling lies like you guys are sitting there going back to like i can't believe these guys listen your interviews are better than everybody else's they're better than mine um you know i'll speak for myself i'm not going to start saying this is why you're better than this but you have in a very short amount of time established yourself in a way that you can interview things but you're not like i remember i tried to get one coach on with you i was trying to help you this is like pre ozer i'd never fucking do it now but um <laughs> <laughs> We, I, we stole we right. we stole Coach O from Ryan. Yeah, hand up. Yeah, but Pinanski yeah. gave him. Two. Yeah, that's nah, true. there was like it was it was tough for me because it was like right after they won the national championship, and then we were like all walking, and you guys were like setting up to interview, yeah. him, and then we all made eye contact, and then O's right hand guy looked at me, and it's like, yeah, I've been the guy going to games out of my own fucking pocket for fifteen years, but no, this is cool. But mm-hmm. I did get cool. I did help Derek get his next job. Did you? Well, at that point, he was your guy. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So I got Coach O, though, in July, and then they made me edit out the best answer. So it's basically the same. Yeah. What, that, what was that answer? The, oh, how would he do against Tommy Moffat in a fight? And it was awesome. <laughs> the answer was incredible. It was actually like the best part of the interview. Oh, and then they the called worst. me after, and they're like, hey, can we just cut it out? I go, dude, no one actually thinks Coach O is going to beat up Tommy Moffat. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's the best part of the interview. Right. But because of my LSU ties, you know, I want to protect the family. Yeah, right. right, yeah. And then I was like, well, hopefully if you guys win another national championship, I can get him in the July after that one, too. Mm-hmm. So wait, what was his answer? Oh, he's like, I smacked the shit out of him. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, he gave you the perfect Coach O answer. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing. And it was, it was like, great. Yeah. You know? I think he also hyped up Trump a lot. They said, keep that in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't want to divide the Tommy Moffat audience. <laughs> no, yeah. I think there was like randomly Trump came up. I did not bring it up, and then he was just like, "Yeah, he was here at practice, and man, he'd make a hell of a football coach." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "That's perfect. That's awesome." So, yeah. so seriously, you you have no regrets at all leaving ESPN? I can't believe we're here again because I feel like I've done all this already. Have I, I don't I, think we have. Yeah. I know, but I we think we never I've done talked it. about Barstool Van Talk and how you had our back, which I I do like. Yeah, Ryan, that's Ryan, something that forever will you you know that was our lowest point, and you know the people that have your back, and you and Scott both had our back, and so whenever someone's like, "Oh, I thought you guys hated ESPN," it's like, well, I don't like ESPN, but there are some certain people there that I will die for, and some of those people have apologized to you, by the way. Yeah, yeah, which I think is fascinating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. I've already talked a lot about this, so I know we haven't really done it. There's just not really anything left for me to say about it. Like, it's been uh, five years. Um, 
the only day I, I've missed it, there was only one day I was in my car where I was like, God damn, I wish I was on the air right now. It was after Westbrook sucked in an elimination playoff game. <laughs> and I was like... Today's live radio is yeah, live radio. It, it, there's something about but it. But I was thinking about this today because I was listening to live radio and I still listen constantly. Like, dude, the day I was done, I was in the car listening to other people. Like, right. I never, it was just time. Okay. It was just time. And I had no idea if it was going to work out or not. I felt like the floor for me was fine. Right. I felt like, hey, whatever my floor is, and I have other interests and, and all the other stuff that I've, I've tried to do and want to do. Um, which is certainly taking a lot of time too, but uh, I wasn't because I was older. I really was at like peace, and I kind of needed, I needed to just be gone. Yeah, because it wasn't. You did the half in, half out for a little bit. Yeah, and that was kind of the funniest thing at the end was because the radio show was the end of seventeen, and I knew that was happening, so. I was like, whatever. But then I was under contract, and then my buddies were like, "Why don't you just go to the south south of France for eight months?" I was like, "I'm not a I'm not like a big enough of a deal to just disappear for a year, right. and then pop back up." And then I did a podcast like after we all kind of calmed down after a couple of weeks, and it, it was actually all like nobody was really mad or anything. And look, they wanted Stephen A. And they yeah. didn't want me, and I understand it. And so um, I was just too young. I was only 42, right? 42, 41, 42. And I'm like, I'm too young to be going in, in the wrong direction. Um, and luckily, the podcast kind of timed it out right. And I was able to move to Manhattan Beach, which is something I've wanted to do for like 20 years when my buddy got traded here and I came to visit him. And I went, I can't believe like this is a town that people live in. Yeah. And so I was like, maybe you just move. You just move and that's it. Like, I mean, it sounds lame, but I cut out a picture of like a real estate guide of like the dream home in Manhattan Beach and I put it in my fridge in Connecticut and I looked at it like every day for five years. I know. Vision and board. you did yeah. it. Yeah, Manifest and, that shit. and life advice happened, which is one of the best segments in, in any podcast. Not the most original thing, but uh, it works because of Kyle and Saruti. Yeah. And it's... What made it good is that it was the wives and girlfriends that don't want to listen to my NBA monologues were like... I went from walking down the street to wives and girlfriends going, I fucking hate you. You're on in the house and in the mm -hmm. car nonstop to, hey, you're the only guy we can agree to listen to on a road trip. We don't listen to the beginning part or whatever. But that's, I mean, I, you, that just triggered a memory. The, the one of the greatest segments ever done, the, the who's the jerk with you and SVP and, and Stanford Steve and the question of who hates you more, Ryan, women or men? Yeah, that was <laughs> that was unbelievable. See, that that's the got part. You so bad. You know what's funny though is like I missed that stuff because of course. I felt like that was really cool stuff that yeah. we were doing. Like we did an entire segment of the show where we did like two segments or something. I go, let's just keep trying different shit. Like I remember pitching "Who's the Jerk" to Van Pelt in the parking lot at A and M for the Manziel Alabama game that was the rematch after he had beat them in Tuscaloosa. And I was like really driven to constantly with the radio show be like, let's keep trying like different dumb shit. Like let's figure it all out. And then they'd be like, eh. And that I'm like, was... how do you not understand how fucking funny who's the jerk was? Like it was so good. It was it so goes and the radio no one cared. Fan. No one in management like there wasn't yeah. one fucking person that went, hey, that thing you did today was awesome. Yeah. And that's when you're like, well, hey, I know this works. Like, my instincts are good. Like, why why are you not understanding? But, like, Mike and Mike were so dominant, and every middle manager and up management person loved Cowherd because he was more aligned with them, life experience, age-wise. And um, that's something you always have to remember. Like, when you're in creative things, like, I think the best creative managers can be like, I don't get anything you're doing, right? But mm -hmm. it fucking works, right? Yeah. So let's just keep doing your thing. Yeah, Dave he, has never listened to a single episode of Pardon My Take. No, he doesn't know I exist. Like, he doesn't. He doesn't. He, it's not for him. Can I tell you a Dave story? Yeah. So I was back at my old stomping grounds of Vermont. Burlington means a lot to me. I go back once. Wait, a year. I thought you. I think went to LSU. No, no football team at Vermont, so I'm allowed to pick one. Got it. Mm. That's true. Yeah. you do get that. No you football do get since that. 1974. So there were a couple younger dudes that were excited that I was at my friend's bar and I used to live like above it. And then 
I'd get stuck on a level of Grand Theft Auto and I would walk down to his bar and like have a couple beers. I'm like, I'm fucking stuck in the parking garage. He'd be like, dude, <laughs> you gotta take the drone. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right. And then I'd set my alarm at 11.59 a.m. He'd be like, all right, up bright and early. <laughs> um, and this girl comes up to me. She's like, are you Dave Portnoy? Because oh, all these younger this. guys are really excited. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not. <sighs> She was disappointed that I was yeah. not. Yeah, you should have gone with it. Should I? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like one I, bite. I used to love it when you did the uh, the Boston accents. What segment was that? You and SVP. State of the nation. State of the nation. Yeah, yeah. Pulse of the nation. Pulse yeah, of the nation. And political like, election year. I, yeah, Pulse of the nation. You'd have like Dropkick Murphys playing in the background yeah. and just yell at each other for for like two or three it was minutes. A great, it was a great radio show. It really was. You know, I listen to it know, in my car during my lunch break. But like, this is the kind of the lesson in all that stuff is that the show the first two years wasn't as good as people remember. It, yeah. Okay. Because that stuff takes a really long time. Like, it actually takes a long time. And like, Scott and I were not friends. He had just heard me filling in and he liked me. And there was this one segment I did, ironically, looking at everything that it said was the, the greatest Super Bowl, greatest tournament, greatest golfer, greatest all these, although Tiger is probably a pretty good choice at that time. And I went through like 12 different things and I'm like, there's no way we're this lucky that we've had these 12 things happen in the yeah. last calendar year. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way we're this lucky. And Van Pelt like called in, but we had like a hard break. We couldn't take him. And then he saw me and he was like, hey, that was really great. And then he came up, they were going to give him Tariko slot because Tariko couldn't keep doing everything that he was doing. And I still think Tariko, if he just said, hey, I'm just going to be radio guy, I think he would have been like the best radio talk show host, but he's doing the olympics and right world championships and everything so that's probably a little bit cooler but i remember like scott's a watch everything guy i'm a watch everything guy scott's probably a little insecure about transitioning from tv to radio i'm insecure just because i feel like what do you guys think i'm the fucking help here like an elf in the <laughs> north pole like I, I got shit to say yeah and so we're the we watch everything guys battling it out and this show was okay but there was this part after like two plus years where he told some story about like getting filmed by a bunch of like high school kids in the lacrosse outfits in the Chipotle in West Hartford and nothing makes it matter. So he starts videotaping them back. I'm like, that's psychotic. Like you videotape the kids back. Like, what are you doing? He's like, well, how do you like it? And I'm like, yeah, but they're not on TV. They're not on like uh -huh. one of the most popular TV shows in the country. I go, tell, you know, tell this story. And you tell those stories, and then you start to realize, like, you can watch games and have sports takes and all that stuff, but, like, you have to figure out a way to get your personality yeah. in there. And, I mean, you guys are the best example of that going, but it's it's weird to get the buy-in. If nobody knows who you are, like, day one, I'm going to be Mr. Personality who's going to care about all these things. But when you start fucking around more with radio shows yeah. and podcasts... And you just go, like, the best it's, segments we have are probably before we even start live advice. We just check in with what Kyle's up to. Yeah. That's the best stuff. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. you want to be... The, you want to know more. You, and You're also, investing that time. It's it's more than, like, when I explain to someone what my job is, it's, like, pretty much just being a guy that people want to hang out with. That's the key. Is like, we need to do a podcast where people want to listen and be like, I could be friends with those guys. Yeah, and you guys have a higher approval rating than I do. I don't think I that's don't true. I get do. a pretty higher, higher approval. We, we actually get a lot of that. You were talking about earlier, a woman coming up to be like, I can't stand you. There's so many people that we talk to. Like, it'll be a guy that comes up, gets his picture taken, his girlfriend's taking the picture, and she's like, he makes me listen to you guys all the time. Yeah. We get that a lot, too. A lot. We're really complimenting each other a ton right yeah, now. Yeah, we are. Yeah. yeah. So the we real should... reason we had you on today is uh, I'm yeah. having a fourth kid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fuck that. No way. Why not? You got the money for it. <laughs> It's not money. It's four, four kids is a lot. Three, is a lot. Three kids three's a lot. is a lot. I'm going to listen to five. Three's a lot. You are think you, five? Basketball team, four rivers? You'd make a great dad. I would. You Because I've heard J.D. Vance, who's calling you a cat lady. I know. He might lose me. <laughs> Do you have a cat? <laughs> What's your cat's name? <laughs> Be careful, J.D. You might r lose Ryan. <laughs> no. Um, you know, I named it Montezuma. I just name. got done reading Conquistador Buddy Levy. <laughs> You check it out. I don't know if you're. You might have a cat. I think he does. Remember when we'll we went to your house after COVID, and we were the first people to be in your house in like three years. I know. I gave myself an extra year of COVID. <laughs> no I one was built better safe, for yeah. COVID than Ryan. No, my Rosilla. friend said the same thing. They're like, yeah. "You're fine, right?" Yeah. Like, yep. <laughs>
But <laughs> then I like another year went by, and I was like, "Are you guys are going out?" <laughs> oh shit! Well, you gotta and then do I, it. You start saying no to too much stuff. I'll tell you right now, if you if you're gonna be by yourself with a fucking cat, say yes to more stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. those calls stop coming in. Yep. And then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, all right, I don't have any kids and I don't have any friends. Yeah. So yeah, I named the cat after Montezuma because I'd read this book and I I'm gonna share something. I've been having a lot of colonizer guilt lately. Mm. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yep. Yeah. Although I feel like Spain just gets a fucking pass. The big time. Right, big Spain, time. Spain absolutely does. It's only because they like they lost some wars in the United States, yeah. right? Right. The Netherlands too. Oh, the Dutch are everywhere. Yeah, they Early. get a huge pass. Federal you know, Reserve. You, you know who gets a pass is uh, Belgium. Yeah. Reserve currency. It's say. crazy. Um, tulips. We. You should do that. You should try that out. Just tulips. Like, no. Hey, you know what? Why don't we talk about the Dutch? They colonized. I may go there next year. We'll table it. Okay. We'll table it because I don't want to get off the plane and be like, you yeah, know, it's fucking oh, like, you know, deep in Helsinki, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you gonna uh, smoke a lot of weed? Probably not. It just never red, happened for me. You're a red light guy? No. Hmm. I don't, I mean, would I admit it? Probably not. No. <laughs> I, I, at some point, <laughs> at some point, that was almost an admission. At some point in a monologue, I feel like you'd let it slip. Yeah. If I did like the travel log and there's just a missing part. Yeah. 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 yeah that'd be a good. That just would, a redacted file. That would tip it off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're turning. So anyway, on Tuesday and then you should <laughs> skip all day. <laughs> so it's Friday. Let's pick it up. Hit the gym a couple of yeah. times. <laughs> Found this great court. Played with this guy. <laughs> oh. So you turned 49. Uh, yeah. Me and Big Cat were 39. So it's I'm like. I'm only. Wait, I'm a full decade yeah. over you guys. Yeah, yeah. But Fuck, I got started too late. When you're when you're in the nines, you do at least for me. When I turned thirty, and and I feel like I'm having the same experience turning forty, I spend like the entire year when I'm twenty nine or thirty nine, just thinking about like, oh shit, I'm almost forty. But then when I turned thirty, I was like, oh, it's no big deal. Like, yeah. fuck it, who cares? But is there anything that you want to do that you want to like uh, any new projects, any new things you want to get into in your forties? Um, I have good news that I can't share. Like it's incredibly good news. Very good news. Are yeah. You, yeah. So it's it's just not finalized yet, and um, Screenplay? it means a lot to me. He's getting a second cat. Because <laughs> the cat, you know, you know how lonely the one cat <laughs> yeah. gets. Like, yeah. This fucking guy's not going to start cat, dating somebody again. Your cat uh, hates you. Well, like, it's just like, hey, man, I can't be there for you all the time. I'm I a think cat. Cats hate everybody. Not a dog. I uh, kind of want to go on a. I know the news. I kind of want to go on a hater revenge tour for, on your behalf. Would you give me permission? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, once I might do that. But I just don't know. Like if I everything, could just everything I'm trying to do, everything I'm trying to do, like you get the yes, and it's like yeah, but you need the bigger yes now. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just it's like fucking Qbert. Um, but just let me know because I'll hit that button. Uh, you already do that to me all the time when you send me a tweet knowing know. that I'm going to quote tweet it. I do like, some Jedi mind <laughs> Ryan, stuff on Ryan's me. like, this guy yeah. pisses me off, so he just sends it to me, and I'm like, oh, fuck, it's on. Or the Dune voice. Can somebody confirm, did Star Wars rip off Dune? I haven't seen a There's second of There's not one guy one in your crew that doesn't know the Wars. answer to that? I don't, I don't know what Dune is. Hank? Yeah. I've never seen yes, Dune. Yes, he said yes. Hank said yes. So that's true, because I read something that was fairly convincing, but I don't know that I want to be convinced of anything anymore. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at with this flow of information. Mm -hmm. You could be telling me the best shit ever. I'm like, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to fall for it. I don't want to get yeah. too high, too low. But yeah, I have the, these aren't the droids you're looking for, and Big Cat will just send the tweet. Yeah. I'll be it. like, hey, you know what would be a funny tweet is this, and then he just does it. <laughs> it's a good attack dog. <laughs> yeah. And then I just end up online for the next three hours, like, fighting. And I, don't, I didn't even mean to do it originally <laughs> until he kept doing it, then admitted <laughs> it. And then I was like, all right, well, now this is like too well, much. Well, congratulations fun. on the big news. Well, I. There's now I need bigger news. But yeah. The first part of the big news is 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 a big deal for me. Yeah. I'm very so happy about that. I probably need to keep pushing myself professionally to fill whatever fucking void or some third therapist cat. would tell me that I have, yeah. which I can mm -hmm. already figure out on my own. So um No, you yeah. don't need a therapist. No, I I'm I'm good. I already know everything yeah. they would say. <laughs> yeah. It'd be pretty fucking obvious. <laughs> and uh I'm I'm like way happier than I've I mean, I'm, this isn't the, the question you're asking me, but like to to the specifics of like the age thing. It's funny because I was the youngest guy until all of a sudden overnight I was like, now I'm older than everybody. Yeah, but that's also because most people are like, you know, 
people with kids don't invite you to stuff because they don't think you would even want to go. Right. Like, why would you even want to come to this? Um, but I, I've worked really hard on, on this thing, and we'll see. So, all right. There you go. So awesome. all right, we got to wrap this up. I mean, it's it is awesome. We we love you, Ryan. Uh, Roback question. Last question, and we'll get out of here. RHOBACK.com, promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase, Q zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. One answer, who wins the NBA title next year? Ooh, that is spicy. Yeah, that's already, you don't, you've used all your words. Um, one, <laughs> one answer. One word. It could, just be, one it could be a team. It could be a team. It could be a... One guy. A vibe. Could, North America. North America? No. Um... I think it's really, really tough to repeat, so I'll just say Nuggets. Oh, okay. I like it. Uh, do you do bracketology for football? It's going to be challenging. Yeah. I love how the other sports try to capture the magic of the 64 you, teams. You can't do it. And, like, NFL.com will have them. Like, hey, did you finish your bracket? And be like, Let me, okay, it's done. Yeah, yeah, but listen, there's a, there's, uh -oh. there's a spot Are you, here now because Joe Lenardi, he pissed me off last year. He, he he admitted that he was going to sleep during a conference final game, and it was just like, "What? What do you mean you're sleeping?" It's the one day he it's, has to. You're work. literally this is this is it. You get one week. He's like, "I'm going to bed." Like, what the fuck? It was Saturday. It was Saturday. Saturday. It was Saturday. Saturday yes, yeah. it was Saturday. It was Saturday the night Max before. Max and I were so mad. Saturday conference. So tournament. mad. Yep. Yeah, he was like going to bed. Like, what the fuck? I think it was oh, he missed the Oregon uh, that that crazy triple overtime game, or no, that was in the tournament. Either way, he went to sleep. On conference championship Saturday, and uh, so someone, some young whippersnapper, is there for the taking. Young whippersnappers are everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what? They're also cheaper too. That's true. They are. Yeah. Placement level whippersnapper. Yeah, I don't know. I I imagine there'll be somebody that they'll try, and I mean this like in general, of like, hey, we're gonna pretend that the projection of the twelve teams is like, like, dude, I could do this in five minutes it's right. not that fucking hard alabama mm -hmm. ohio state clemson <laughs> Michi texas michigan. michigan i just can't wait for the 12 <laughs> 13 14 team arguments yeah maybe tulane and there's gonna be a 14 <laughs> colorado <laughs> like a team ranked 14th you're gonna be like you stink yeah you haven't beaten anyone yeah and you want a chance for the national championship don't forget about the six point loss to ohio state right when they were up 14 yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> went for two. all right ryan you're the best everyone Thanks go lot, subscribe to his podcast ryan Rosillo podcast uh, and yeah, let's go celebrate your birthday. Sounds good. Mount Rushmore is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Book your fantasy football draft party at Buffalo Wild Wings to get a fantasy championship ring. Book at buffalowildwings.com slash fantasy. B-dubs is football. Let's go sports bar. Book at buffalowildwings.com slash fantasy. That's buffalowildwings.com slash fantasy. Okay, Mount Rushmore time. It is getting late and tight in the Mount Rushmore season. We have it's hot. six Mount Rushmores left. The standings are Max, who's clinched, 61 points. I have 53 points. PFT has 45. Hank has 41. So Hank is four behind PFT. Yep. Reminder, the points go four, three, two, one. So Hank, if you win this, and PFT loses this Mount Rushmore, you only be a point behind. So each one matters. It does matter, big. I'm time. not, and I'm not clear either. I, I could, I could have a all time choke job and, and falter down the down the uh, last six ones. So, Hank, we let Hank pick this one. Yep, he's went with Mount Rushmore of best feelings, and Hank is up first. Weirdly, go for it, Hank. Yeah, I'm up first. How are you feeling, Hank? I feel overall? bad. I feel uh, I feel nervous. I feel paranoid. Uh, mm -hmm. But I feel excited. I'm excited to have the opportunity to try and make the most of the season and, and go on a late season run. That's yeah. football guy talk right there. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm honored to have the opportunity. Yeah, and you are. Um, Just got to peak at the right time. I am excited. I am happy that we had the the moment of clarity a couple weeks ago, where or maybe it was last week. Where you just came clean on the fact that you're bad at this, so you lash out and you accuse everyone else of everything. Because tonight, when we were picking it, you came in and accused us of cahoots, cahoots, cahooting against you. 
Well, there's been a couple times where you're like, pick one, and then I pick one, and then you just say what you want to do. No, we ended up with what you want to do. I know, I know, but that, I was... Well, I was, was you hey, picked, hey, you okay, picked wait, stuff wait, that wait, we've hey, already done. Wait, flag. Yeah. Flag on the play. Thank you, PFT. Because Because Hank gets coddled to... And cater to that's crazy. more than anybody crazy. in Mount Rushmore. Keep Wars. him happy. It's always it's always Big Cat being like, Hank, what do you want to do? Hank? Yeah, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Hank, you have you are coddled when Hank, it comes to Mount Rushmore. The only reason I said, and today, you know it's true. No, reason, how many of the Mount Rushmore's have I picked this year? Hank, Hank the only reason I protested tonight, like I picked was the food like, ones. I think you've, I think we've done this before. Which was a different one, which we're not doing. But then you admitted that it was too close. Yeah, so I was right. Right. So. Apologize to me. But you still want to do Mount Yeah, but it's I apologize. I was trying to I help apologize. you with yeah. the other one. No, I said I'm paranoid. I said, I said, I said I'm paranoid. Yeah. I said I'm paranoid. I said well, I said we should do I'm Mount- still not not paranoid, but I'll admit that I am paranoid. You're blindly I, accusing cahoots. I said that we I offered up uh because I did ask Felt you. Felt like pick. cahoots. Well, I asked I said we should just do the Mount Rushmore of words that start with B so you could pick boobs one one. I was trying to be your friend. But I wasn't in the room. This is this is also nonsense that would be it doesn't matter for the podcast listeners. This oh, they love this. Behind Are you kidding me? This was a conversation. I was in the bathroom taking care of business. You guys were in the same room. And Big Cat was usually when he's like pressing to do something that he wants to do. All of a sudden, PFT, who was in the same room with Big Cat, it felt like they guys had come to a game plan and then said, you know what? Let's make <laughs> I it. I was impressing. I, then Big I Cat was like, said, and then I said that was a good feelings. topic. And I wasn't pressing. I said, let's do B words so you can get boobs. All right. So so in conclusion, Hank, when we say. <laughs> you let, are paranoid. I told you. When we I say let's that. don't do this topic, you're like, that's bullshit. Then when we say, yeah. Let's do that topic. You're like, it's also what's your angle? I know. I was good with it. I'm like, all right, but I felt like cahoots. Like usually, when you guys let me, you guys, when you when I suggest like something, we and you guys are like, okay. It sounds like yeah. we can't exist. Usually, when you guys are like, you know, the FT's exactly right. I told you I was paranoid. <laughs> you are paranoid. Okay, Hank. Best feelings, Mount Rushmore. I also one, feel one. like I figured out the cahoots, but we can get to it at the There's end. There's no cahoots. No, I, we'll get to it at the end because I could be wrong. I probably am. You are. My motto is anytime, I'm just anyone, going, anywhere. I'm just running the ball. I'm going with the theme. You know, the listeners, I hope, appreciate it. I'm just going with feeling boobs. <laughs> <Okay>. I knew <laughs> he was going to do All that. Right. <laughs> That's why I said the B word. You left a massive. I know. Yeah. You I left a massive your, your, gap at no at the second pick. Now Max gets 1-1. One, one. This is your three your three Mount Rushmore topics that you wanted to do was uh, simple pleasures, best feelings, and then I was like, let's just do B words because you just want to do one that you get boobs. Yeah. Okay. That I cannot believe. I, like I almost don't even want to take this. <laughs> what crazy. are you doing? It's Hank? crazy. He did that. What are you doing? I he just his brain is just thinking this boobs. The, He's like, if I get boobs, I win. <laughs> That's why we should have done B words. I know. I know. I know. What I What know. was that, Hank? This is the, the most <laughs> obvious one. You picked feeling this because it, because it, <laughs> what happens after you? Yes, feel the boobs? that is is what feels yeah, but better. That's just a pressure. That's a high pressure situation. No, it's not. <laughs> Oh, Having sex, one one. <laughs> All right, what what does that include? Sex. Sex. You you want what do you want? Like head? Yeah, get your dick sucked. You want your ass eaten? Uh, so this is just going to be like different forms of sex <laughs> throughout this entire Mount Rushmore. Well, no, no, Maybe. we'll all get sex, and he'll just have feeling boobs. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Max, you get all of sex. Yeah, he can I have mean, all of I don't sex. care. I, I, I don't care. All right, I, all right, you get all of sex. Take all of sex. Just so it's a little bit of variety on this Mount Rushmore. All of sex except TF. <laughs> yeah, he would sure. never pick that. Yeah, you hate that. Do you understand? I, yeah, I knew that's. I realized. I realized. But you, did, when did you realize? I just. That's what I said. I, I'm sticking. I stuck to it. I, I kind of realized. <laughs> I that. know your brain so well that when you said best feelings, I was like. That's that what was, you guys talked about in the room. All I said was PFT. You guys, I admit I, that conversation happened in the game. Here's the exactly the conversation. So I was right about the conversation. <laughs> no, you weren't. No, you weren't. Because you said best feelings, and I said PFT. He just wants to take feeling boobs, so why don't we just do B words? But then why did PFT say feelings? Because he was like... He <laughs> because honestly, it. I knew you were going to take boobs, and, so, then, and then Max was going to have... That, and that conversation boobs. happened, correct? <laughs> Yeah, because it was obvious what you were going to do. It's not cahoots. We just accurately predicted the future. We just know how stupid you are. Yeah, it's not cahoots. But we you guys are acting you. like... When no the weatherman's like, it's going to storm later on today, are you like, that weatherman's in cahoots with God? I, let's, just, let's just get on with I it. I think Hank's doing this on purpose for content. Yeah, I think The yeah. way that that... I cannot believe that you just it's, did that. You, you so think like you're not, there's no you're way you're this dumb. Your vision of... Off his headphones. Your vision, your vision of cahoots, you knew what the wrong pick to make was, and you still made it. 
<laughs> well, no, he you didn't hear the part when I said after. I was paranoid. Yeah, he didn't know till after. No, I. Yeah, whatever. You, you know, you pick. still took feeling boobs. Yeah, which is a good feeling. I'll give you that. Yeah, great feeling. Fourth round the pick. Best feeling. Yeah. Okay, so Max has sex and Hank has feeling boobs. It's a good pick, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I I still don't believe that Hank did that. On, like that had to have been on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There's a lot of good feelings. There are a lot of really good feelings. I got a lot of feelings. Me too. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with. Right when you get drunk. Mm. That's a good feeling. The moment you get drunk. That's a good feeling. So just being drunk. Yeah. Drinking. Drinking. Drinking is my is my choice. Drinking. Okay. Drinking beers. That's a good that's a good pick. I like that one. Thank you. I like that one. It's no sex. Um okay, so or I have boobs. two. Okay. Um hmm. all right. When the perfect song comes on, when the perfect song comes on, it okay. could be at a party in, in your car. Like you know when it happens. When mm -hmm. the perfect song comes on for the vibe, but match the that moment. will be the exact pick. When the perfect song comes on for the vibe, it could be nostalgia, anything. There's just no better feeling than just like, damn, this song. Mm -hmm. um, and then my second one, I'm gonna go with the 30 minutes before the NCAA tournament tips off. That's a good pick. Great feeling. Great fucking feeling. Everything's like, possible. I'm going to win everything. This is the next, the best four days of the calendar year. Just love that feeling. Bottle up that feeling. Sell it. I would take it over feeling boobs. Not me. Okay. You don't like sports. I love sports. And you love women. I love sports. <laughs> okay, PFT, your next pick. All right, my next pick is going to be your dog greeting you after you've been gone for a long Good time. Good pick. Good pick. Had it on there. Yeah. Yeah, it's the a wag at the door. Great moment. Blake does his tail in a circle when he's really happy. Yep. When I get that circle tail going, he cuddles in. Yep. You feel like the king of the world. Jumping on you. Yep. It's a great pick. Max. Uh, I'm going to go. Meatballs. <laughs> oh, that would be great if you did. Picking meatballs in, a, in a, another draft I've won. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go winning a championship. Yep. Okay. That's a great as pick. A, yep. As a fan? Great feeling. As a fan yeah. or a person playing? I'm just going to say winning a championship. Well, I, there's a difference, I think. No, you could take a kick yeah. winning a championship. Winning a championship. Winning a championship. Okay. The fans are part of the team. That's true. Yeah, we They're say we. big part of the yeah. team. They're actually the team. Right. Hank. I'm going to go with waking up Christmas morning as a kid. Okay. Mm. Had it. That pick, was going to be my next pick. pick. Good pick, Hank. Here we go. Let's rebuild. And payday. Oh, payday is nice. One. Yeah. Nice one. Nice one, especially if you don't pay taxes like Hank. I pay taxes. <laughs> Beta is extra. I got zero. <laughs> okay. Good picks, Hank. Thank you. Kind of bringing this back around. I, snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to go leaving work uh, as you start a vacation. Yep. Yep. That's a good pick. Eh. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll actually push back a little on that just in the fact that I hate traveling. Okay. Like I like getting to the like getting to the vacation. Yeah, like is opening my the hotel room. Yeah, at your vacation. Like landing yeah. at the vacation is my feeling. Arriving okay. at a vacation destination. Uh, I don't know. The, the, I think it's more so. It's less so for us, but more so for people who have like a nine to five. But like five o'clock hits. Yeah. On like and you're and you know you have a week off is it, got it's like the best. Yeah, I just hate traveling so much. All right, I'm gonna go similar kind of to Max's pick. Uh, quitting a job you hate. Mm, good one. It is a great feeling, Espe especially that drive away from work. I remember when I quit my job that I hated, uh, the last job I hated. It was, I don't think I can ever replicate that feeling in my life. Yeah, great one. I would I would do that over touching boobs all day. Great one. All right, uh, I got two. I got one that I have to do that you guys are probably going to be like, uh but I have to do it. But I, here's the other one. Uh, this one is tells me this is kind of the inverse of winning a championship. This is showing myself as a loser. Uh, but watching your enemies or rivals fail is a great fucking feeling. Your enemies or rivals? Yeah, a enemies slash rivals. Oh, slash rivals. Fail like, or lose. I, I thought you were saying enemies or rival like no. when Aaron Rodgers went out on the field the first time with the Jets. Yeah, w watching your enemies slash rivals lose is such a great feeling. It's just a great, great feeling. Yep. Uh, okay. I'm, the Mount Rushmore of hater moves would be a good one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, 
All right, I will do. Oh man. Okay, I won't do the kids one. I'll save the kid ones for honorable mention. I'll I'll keep it straight. Uh, here. Uh, walking into a bachelor party that first first like, night hour of a bachelor party where it's just they can't you can't get better vibes. It's and it's similar, not hung over yet. It's similar to the the NCAA tournament. Yeah, it's where just it's like. It, this is going to be awesome. Old friends you haven't seen in forever. Everyone's ready to fucking rage. No one's, you know, because by like day two, you've already lost a couple people. Yep. There's some stragglers. Day three, you're like, I just get me the fuck out of here. But when you walk in like that Thursday night, oh, you drink a million beers. Mm -hmm. Usually the reason, usually the vibes are so high when you walk in that it ruins the rest of the bachelor party because you drink so much. The first you're trying time. to chase that. Yeah. Moment. Yeah. yeah. Should I take becoming a parent? I feel like that wasn't my one, but I feel like it's got to be. I might say it for Hank. I'll say it for Hank. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. You can take becoming a parent. Why would I take that? Okay. It's a good feeling. I had a parent I, one. I'll save for honorable mentions. I wanted to go straight. I wanted to play on the equal playing ground. Okay. I will go with. You can take it. I'm not going to take it. You won't. You're right. I won't. <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, getting a call or text after a first date from somebody that you really like. Mm, nice. When she texts first. W maybe after feeling her boobs? No, maybe you haven't felt the boobs yet, but oh. that's a sign that you will you feel, feel You could be feel. That's pre-boob. That's pre-boob. Holy shit. You get really excited about feeling those boobs. That's a great feeling. Just anything that implies boobs will be felt. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. This is mine's gonna be pretty niche. Okay. But I don't care. I already Meatballs? clinched. Oh. <laughs> uh, when your rival's the, favorite player signs with your team. Nope. It's the best feeling in the world is hitting a home run. Ah. Okay. I did have walk off home run. Just which, like, yeah, yeah. Just like the feeling like the split second when you know you got one and it's like fuck yeah, that yeah. rocked. Yeah. When it hits perfect. Yeah. Okay, Hank, your last pick. I will go with Finding cash in a pair of pants you haven't worn in a long time. Wow. Okay. Hey, so payday and that. You're rich. You're greedy. It, money is great. Yeah, money is a great feeling. And, and either seeing money in your account or you put on a pair of pants, you're like, you know, maybe it's the spring. You haven't worn these shorts since last, you know, summer. Can I, 20 bucks. Boom. Can I throw one out that I thought you were going to pick there? Sure. I mean, puring a drive is such a great feeling. Yeah, it is. Hole in one? I'd rather pure a drive. Than a hole in one. Yeah, hole in one. I mean, I, we've never felt that. It'd be so. stolen valor, yeah. Yeah, that would be stolen valor. But puring a drive was on my list where it's just like when you fucking hit, just crush one down the middle, there's no better feeling. It's true. I thought you'd have at least a golf. Maybe you just don't love golf. No, I don't. Boobs or golf for the rest of your life? Gun to your head. Can never touch a boob again or can never golf again. Can I do the other stuff? Can never touch a boob again and can never golf again. Wait, did you just admit that sex is better? Three, two, one, go. Decide. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I said that. Three, two, one. Golf. Oh, you, you'd never golf again? You'd never touch a boob again? If I could do the other stuff, I'd never touch a boob again. Wow. Not even you'd over You'd never the touch a boob again? I mean, golf, there's, one, a one lot, there's a lot of, yeah, I know. And but you didn't take any golf. It wasn't like things that you could feel for the rest of your life. Best feelings in the world. I'd take, I'd take, I'd take boobs. Yeah, boobs. Definitely. Boobs are so good. Yeah, they are. They should, they're pretty much the one-one pick in almost every draft. Uh, honorable mentions. My kid one wasn't kids being born. It's actually maybe it should have been, but it, it's watching uh, your kid accomplish something is like the best feeling ever. Like just your kid being happy or feeling like they did something and like being proud of it is. That one just bottle up and just be a billionaire. Yeah, overnight. Uh, what other ones do you guys have? Falling in love. Falling, Falling in love. love. Good one. Huey. Huey, you're romantic. You're not Huey. a boobs or you. sex guy. You're a love I care guy. About the personality. Yeah. Uh, nailing a parallel parking spot. I had that in front of a crowd. Yeah. Yep. When there's people watching you. Um, uh, finding out that it's gonna be a snow day. Yeah. As a kid, having a great shit. Just one yep. of those like shit's good. Like where you just feel piss. ten pounds. Yeah, pissed too. 
But when you feel like 10 pounds yeah. lighter. Yeah. Just peeing when you really have to. When you to. really have yep. to pee. That honestly, that's a really I know. I, I had a bunch of sleep ones when I realized I didn't want to just do all I had a sleep. But like going to sleep with nothing to with do. With no the alarm. Morning. Yeah, no alarm. Waking up fully rested. That was the other one. An incredible feeling I haven't felt in forever. Uh, what about this one? You guys going over a big jump uh, when you feel it in the bottom of your balls. <laughs> You know what okay. I'm talking about, like, like on, on a bike, a, on yeah. a bike, or like a, yeah. or being on a swing set or a roller coaster, getting roller that coaster, tingle yeah. at the bottom of your balls. Yeah. Oh, that one's a good feeling. Hypothetically, successfully sneaking into a sporting event, yep. is one of the best feelings ever. Breaking the law, fuck, yeah. should have had breaking, breaking the, law. the law on the list. Breaking, breaking the law and getting away with it, yeah, is a great one. Getting away with a crime. Sunday night of a long weekend, that's a great yeah. feeling. Where you just like your body tells you like oh shit we got to go to oh shit we don't oh another day yeah yeah Sunday night of a long weekend is Sunday a great night feeling. Sunday night when it's you have Monday off yeah yeah yes. it's a great feeling yes. the last day of school as a kid last day of like, school waking okay. up Sunday after winning bet Saturday yep yeah. yeah yeah hitting a big hitting a game of the year taking off Spanx yep <laughs> let it breathe for a little bit I took off my Spanx last night after the wedding and I just oh it's incredible microwave thing. When you when you when you time it when you time, time when you time it, it and you and you, you get balls. it right before the, the, yep. thing, the yeah. thing goes off hitting all the traffic lights oh yeah that's a good one good feeling being at a game that you know is like historic is a good is mm -hmm. like like a, either a clinching walking game. into a big game is, yeah whoa yeah. that's a great one oh. oh there's when you see the grass right. for grass, the first right. time oh. oh that green through the stadium oh. concourse that's so a good. great one. Except Shit. for when it's like super sunny and you're really hungover. I had one that we've all experienced: uh, a Schwarber home run. Yep. Yeah, that's great fun. feeling. Great thing to root for. Great fucking feeling. Uh, I had when your car starts. Yep. Maybe niche, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> when the food comes to your table. Yeah. At a restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, or also uh, when you do the move where you go, where the food's taking a while, and you go to the bathroom, and then you come back, and it's there. That's a great feeling. When the time that perfectly. When the server tells you excellent order. Yeah, yeah, that's a good feeling. Um, what else? Any any others? Puring a drive. How how do you feel? How do you feel? I think Hanks was good. I think I think he did a good job. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah. Uh, the red zone countdown clock. The first yeah. one of the season. Yeah. The single single uh, onion ring in a French fry order. Going that to lucky yeah, one. Yeah, it's a great feeling. Going to a, a post Super Bowl winning. Party with the team. Yep. I imagine that would be fun. Ringing a bell at a lighthouse. Leading your favorite sports team onto the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Patriots also just stole the bell for the Sixers. Like, why Like why is it a bell? <laughs> it's a fair question. He's been like, what is it? One. Yeah. It's been like, Bells are in fucking lighthouses. Lighthouses are a representation of the region of New England. Wait, but hey, you, I, you just said that the Patriots were your favorite team. I thought the Celtics were your favorite team. The next one. Just say the next one. Your next favorite football team. The next okay, favorite football team. Uh, making great time on a drive. That's oh, yeah. a great oh, feeling. Yeah. When you're just like, I fucking crushed that drive. I thought of one of like, I didn't really know how to explain it. When you get somewhere and a line builds after you, oh, but there's no line. Yeah. When you, I didn't really know how to explain it, but it's a great That's feeling. That's a great feeling. That's a great, great feeling. Um, okay. This is a good Mount Rushmore. Donating to charity. Yeah. Matching. Matching a donation to charity. Co-host donated to charity. Yeah. <laughs> but actually better. Great feeling. The matches actually feels better. Doubling, Doubling and, and matching. matching. Yeah. Feels way better. <laughs> Telling everyone you've donated to charity yeah. feels great. Uh, giving your seat to a troop on a flight in front of Peter King and having him write about it in his football column. Yeah, that's great. It's got to be a good feeling. It's a great feeling. Uh, I imagine taking steroids would be a great feeling too. Yeah. Any anything with that, Hank? Not yet. That'll be September. Okay. Yeah, because Hank turned to me uh, yesterday and said it, it might be steroids time. Steroid season and <laughs> fake the <butt> dunk. <laughs> We're gonna do some. I'm gonna I'm make a call to a <laughs> former colleague of ours. <laughs> oh, all right. Good. Good. Uh, <laughs> good Same sport. Good show, boys. Uh, we'll Same see career path too. Yeah, we'll see everyone from camp. See everyone from camp. Uh, on Wednesday, let's finish off with numbers. 69 in, Three. in, in his honor. 20. Three. 56. 61. 99 Pug PFT. 98 Pug.
Oh yeah, Pug got me ninety nine. I want this to be ninety eight. He so got bad. it for the fifth time. It's gonna be ninety eight. It's it's Pug. It's not the number. Ninety eight. Oh my god. <laughs> no fucking oh god. way. <laughs> no fuck fucking fuck way. Is that ninety eight or eighty six? That's ninety eight. At the bottom, it's on the bottom. Oh my god. What this the fuck, fucking Pug? fucking guy. <laughs> Pug, you Maybe are. Maybe it is just me, Pug. <laughs> oh my God, you're a that... fucking magician, dude. Pug is a problem. How did you do that? It's ninety eight. PFT, do you want ninety eight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can take ninety nine back. No, you just need to have Pug tell you what number to pick. Uh, I, I, I can't. That's insane. This is two well, in a row. It doesn't matter because whatever two you in pick, a row on unheard. different numbers is insane. I got to get out of ninety nine. Uh, you are. It's yours again, Pug. This guy just dominates this machine. I'm hot. I'm hot. <laughs> I mean, Pug. Pug. What a legend. Fucking Pug. He's the perfect guy to have this to. Yeah. God damn it, Pug. That's just, that's the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Walks in after six. He's got six. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go to the Jordan. Six. He's got uh he just spread your fingers out, Pug. What are you doing? There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh he just walks in at the end of the show and he just gets the number. He just walks out. Does pug things. Goes scratches his ears. Goes plays licks NFL his butthole. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good job, pug. Love you guys.